Chapter 21, Stigma Slash Academy This is your last one? Yeah, I think so. That's good. Any more and you would have a hard time getting to the academy. Ava smiled as she spoke with Dirk. They were currently in his room, and Dirk was preparing for a destruction cycle. Two more months had passed, and Dirk had finished his left foot. Now, he was on his right and hoping he would only have to do one more cycle. After getting comfortable on his bed, he started. He moved the anima over to the skin and began the resonation. The skin started to redden, and five minutes later there were a few shallow cracks. That was it though. Even continuing more, Dirk couldn't feel anything. The rest of his skin had been cycled through and wouldn't be destroyed under the resonation. He smiled seeing how little damage there was. Something like this could heal in a few days. Not only did Anima toughen and strengthen his body, it also made it recovery faster. Something that took a week now only took four days. This combined with his nanites and the potions he was fed made recovering very convenient. Looks like you'll be able to walk. Ava also nodded seeing the light damage. She had almost always been there to watch his cycles. She also saw how he became tougher after each one. The first cycle he trembled and had to vomit. But now, he could push through a first cycle with a mere grunt and frown. This kind of tenacity was insane to Ava. After finishing the cycle, the AI moved the nanites to seal and began repairing the wounds. The sealing made it so that nothing would get infected and the skin would be supported, preventing any more tearing. The AI had actually come to learn how to better handle Dirk's destruction wounds over time, optimizing the repair process. Though Dirk wasn't really aware of this. Seeing how the sealing was done, Dirk took the medical wrap next to him and wrapped his foot. This was more for show as his mother had ordered him to wrap his wounds to prevent infection. He didn't need to with his nanites, but he didn't really have a choice. He didn't mind though. It at least made things more comfortable. As he wrapped his foot, Ava stared at him for a bit before speaking. I won't be coming tomorrow. My parents need me to prepare for entering the academy. All right. Dirk simply nodded. The day to officially enter the academy was the day after tomorrow. Dirk obviously wouldn't insist that she arrive for training. He was surprised that she even came today. Will, we be seeing each other there? I don't know. I'm not even sure what we'll be doing there besides learning magic. Dirk shrugged. He didn't know much about the academy, let alone whether he and Ava would be seeing each other. He assumed they probably would since the place was only so big, but how often was a different question. Ava thought for a second before speaking. Well, I'll be looking for you. Depending on our schedules, we can keep training. Hmm. But in case we don't see each other, you should take the training by yourself when you can. I know you train anima, but you still lose stamina fast. You shouldn't have more than three day gaps between training. Just do the workouts we would normally do and you'll be fine. All right. But what about martial arts? That? I'm not sure. It's hard to train without a partner. Just work on fundamental striking movements and that should keep you sharp. The knowledge of martial arts movements don't go away so easily, and many movements should be reflex for you now. Ava nodded hearing that. Dirk's training had firmly engraved many fundamental techniques into her bones. She was capable of reacting properly on pure instinct now. Those instincts wouldn't wash away so easily, and doing fundamentals on her downtime would keep her refreshed. Just make sure not to forget your training. When the time comes for you to really fight someone, you need to keep yourself calm and use the moves you've been taught. I understand. It's not like we're going to war though. Ava brushed off his words a bit. Dirk shook his head though and spoke firmly. That's irrelevant. Two years ago, you were a timid mess incapable of standing for yourself. You had no knowledge or skills that could keep you safe and secure. Now, I've trained you to be strong in body and mind. No matter where you're at, you must be strong. In all situations and in all decisions, you must be strong. Wield the strength that you've earned. Otherwise, it will be washed away by the people and environment around you. Am I clear? Crystal. 
Ava answered strictly, something she had been taught to do by Dirk. The next moment though, she thought a little more deeply about his words. She looked back and realized how far she had come. Her first day of school, she had struggled to even enter a classroom. Now, she was capable of holding her own in any conflict, and her confidence was high. She was no longer so self-conscious. It was as if she were a totally different person. Wield the strength that you've earned. Be strong in body and mind. Don't let it be washed away by the people around you. These words engraved themselves in her psyche, and she became a bit emotional. Dirk had given her a chance, and she had worked so hard. She didn't let him or herself down. She couldn't imagine where she would be if she hadn't met him. The thought of going into the academy and the outside world as a timid girl incapable of defending herself scared her, and she understood how priceless such a transformation was. Her eyes reddened a bit, and her mouth trembled as she spoke. Can. Can we hug? Hm. Dirk's eyebrows raised a bit at her question, and he realized she was getting emotional. He didn't really understand why, but she was a girl, and like with his mother he stopped questioning why. Thinking about it, he just nodded and stood up. He had taught her to ask questions outright, and if it were just this, he didn't mind. Seeing him agree, Ava moved in. The two hugged deeply, and Dirk could hear some light sniffles. Ava was shorter than him, so her face was buried in his chest. He wondered if he would have to wash his shirt. The two were like that for almost a minute as Ava calmed down. Eventually they separated, and she wiped her eyes. T thank you. Sure. She backed away with a red but content face. Dirk nodded before going back to the bed and beginning his man along training. Seeing him, Ava also sat on the bed and did some meditation. Though, she couldn't concentrate much as she thought about the future and what she would do if she didn't see Dirk anymore. Also, Dirk's effect on the surrounding mana was rather intense, making meditation difficult. Dirk didn't care though as he simply breathed in and out. By now, he was capable of dozens of breaths. Mana lungs was beginning to become more like actual breathing, the mana around him flowing freely from the environment into his soul and back out again. When he first started, breathing into the limit caused soul-tearing pain, and breathing all the way out would cause him to almost faint. But now, breathing into the limit only caused a dull pain, and breathing all the way out didn't make him so drowsy. He knew that his soul had gotten tougher, so as he pushed himself more, he became capable of doing the technique easily. Dirk seemed to be breathing mana normally for several minutes. Each time he breathed in and out, he felt like he could contain a tiny bit more mana than before. However, he had yet to actually step into Tier 2. He had felt like he was on the edge for almost a year now. It was getting a bit frustrating not advancing. Maybe I just need to practice this more. Since it's getting easier, I should try training throughout the day. Can't get better if I don't push myself. With that conclusion, Dirk continued to breathe. He wanted to be able to breathe mana just as he breathed air, so he set his new goal and worked on it. Please don't tell me you're actually going to work out. Do I not have time? Just relax, child. You can survive a day without training. We leave in two hours. Oh and don't do any mana training either. You'll need to be in good shape for the test. Cecilia spoke as she shook her head. Today was the day that Dirk officially entered the academy. Initially, he didn't really mind that as he prepared to do his morning routine. His mom stopped him though, baffled that he would still think of such a thing when today was a big day. Hearing her, Dirk reluctantly returned to his room to wait for the two hours. In there, he decided to do some light exercises to get his blood flowing and pass the time. Nothing that would make him that tired, of course. He also did a few minutes of mana breathing. When the time to leave approached, Dirk dressed in a formal casual set of clothes. He had come to greatly prefer clothes that he could move around in as he never liked being restricted. Plus, he didn't have any formal clothes that fit him since he had grown so much and had no need for them. After dressing, Dirk went down to the entry hall right when he was supposed to. Cecilia was already there and nodded when she saw him. Dirk was always very punctual. 
the two then quickly boarded the carriage and drove off. Dirk, what tear are you now? While they were riding through the busy streets, Cecilia asked him. Dirk quickly answered. I'm still tear I plus dot. I see. Now, I'm not exactly worried about this happening soon, but I think I'll let you know about it anyway just in case. There's a certain thing that mages and warriors eventually come to form after rising in power. It's called a stigma, and you can think of it as a unique tool that's formed from the soul. It's rather rare to form one, but I have actually formed it, as has your father. This is my stigma. Saying that, Cecilia raised her hand. In it, a saber mysteriously appeared out of thin air. The saber was solid gray, but Dirk had a hard time seeing where the blade was located. It was like it did and didn't exist. Stigmata can come in many forms. Your father's stigma is that magic book you always see him carrying. A stigma can also be a cloak, an alchemical flask, a shield, a bow, a forging hammer, or a magic staff. There is no definite rule to what a stigma can be, and we only have general ideas about how they are formed. Generally, talented people begin to form their stigma around tier 4. People who aren't talented won't form one at all, and they also don't tend to rise high in tiers. Warriors can also form a stigma after reaching a high enough rank. Again, the rules to form one aren't well defined, but it's agreed that only talented people will be capable of forming one. And you, my child, are a talented boy. Cecilia ruffled Dirk's hair proudly. You have three attributes, two of which are specialized. Most people only have one attribute, and it's rare to get two. Three is even rarer, and a four-attribute mage is something you may only hear about once in your life. You are a three-attribute mage, so you automatically have some talent. Should you develop smoothly, I have no doubt that you'll form a stigma of your own. Just know that if you begin to feel anything weird in your soul and start to feel an image take form, then it's likely your stigma forming. I'm not sure when it'll be for you but you could very well form it after reaching tier 3. Or rank 3 if you get there first. If you have any questions, you can also ask your father. After all, he'll be at the academy. Understood. Dirk memorized all the words she said. This stigma thing sounded interesting, but he hadn't yet felt anything taking form. It looked like he would have to give it time and simply keep an eye out. The next moment though, he thought of something. What was his mother going to do while he was gone? Was she going to stay in the house by herself? Mother, what will you be doing after I enter? Me? I've been thinking about that recently. I might just go live with your father in the academy since that's basically become his home. HM, I still have to take care of my plants though. I don't know. I'll have to think about it more. All I know is that you probably won't be seeing home for a long while. Your siblings all live in the academy, except for Viola who has gone off on her own dungeon expedition to further her power. I believe Ethan is also joining the military, so he'll be leaving soon. There isn't much for you back home anyway. Everything you need is in the academy. Cecilia hugged her son as she said that. She was both happy and sad that he was moving on. She was mostly excited though. Her son couldn't be more ready and she looked forward to what he achieved in the future. Soon, the two arrived at the plaza outside the academy walls. The place was filled with people, all of them parents and children who were entering. Dirk and his mother exited the carriage and walked into the plaza. They kept an eye out for Riker who was supposed to come get them. Dirk! Ah! What the? Dirk's head snapped around when he heard a shrill shout. He could see Rita running toward him, but as he watched her approach, his pupils contracted. Occasionally as she ran, she would suddenly disappear in a black fog and reappear a few meters away. She did this consecutively to weave through the crowds of people, and Dirk almost threw out a punch when she teleported almost right in front of him. It took all his self-control to refrain from doing anything as she dove into him. Ah! Look how big you've gotten! Oh! and strong. How are you? Rita hugged him tightly while he stood there and took it. Seeing how much Rita had grown, Dirk could only smile. 
Rita was now sixteen and a bit taller than Dirk. She was a slim but developed girl with a stunning face and gorgeous black hair that seemed to be illusory. Also, he could feel intense power from her. Seeing through his mana sense, she simply looked like a dense ball of chaotic dark energy. He didn't know what happened, but she had become seriously powerful since he'd last seen her. After evaluating her progress, Dirk smiled a bit. I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. Very good. You are going to love the Academy. I'm already tier 5. You also have perfect affinity for the Dark Element. Suddenly, a deep voice came from behind. Rita turned around to see her dad smirking at her. Oh, hi dad. Ah. Uh, what did I tell you about void walking in public? To not. Yeah. You haven't mastered it, so don't go zipping around all over the place. I'm good enough though. I at least won't hit anybody. Rita spoke with a bit of injustice. Riker just shook his head. I don't care. Spatial magic isn't your forte and it's not a joke. A single slip and you'll kill someone with a spatial ripple. I understand. Rita's mood was dampened under Riker's scolding. He just rolled his eyes at her and turned to his son. Are you ready, kid? From today onward, you'll be a mage and body refiner. They train both in the academy, so you won't be missing out on anything. Yes, sir. Dirk answered with a bit of excitement. He had been looking forward to this day for a long time. All those days of slogging through school was for this very moment. All right then. Since you're my son, you won't have to worry about getting in line and going through all these procedures. Before that though, say bye to your mother. You might not see her for a few days. Bye mom. Dirk nodded and turned around, giving his mother a hug. She hugged him tightly before letting him go with a kiss on the forehead. Okay. Follow me you too. Riker walked off, and Dirk and Rita followed him. Cecilia watched them walk off for a bit before turning around herself. Taking a step, darkness enveloped her and she disappeared. After walking off, Riker took Dirk inside the academy. They walked straight through the gates and off to a large building that looked something like a gymnasium. After walking in, they were greeted with a small crowd of people. There were several different stations with short lines behind them, and children around Dirk's age were all getting tested for something. This is the testing area. All your information is already processed, so you only need to get tested for your ability to control mana. All you need to do is place your hand on the ball and inject mana into it. Reach a certain threshold, and you'll be cleared. The farther you go, the better your rating. Though, that doesn't particularly matter for you. You'll be put into the class I've set aside for you anyway. Now go ahead and wait in line. Understood. After Riker patted him, Dirk went over and got in one of the lines. None of the kids talked to each other as they stepped up to the table one by one. The atmosphere was tense for them, but Dirk didn't particularly feel nervous. He was rather confident in his ability to control mana. Eventually, Dirk stepped up to the table. There was a man who looked to be in his fifties behind the table, though with Dirk's new knowledge about lifespans, he couldn't tell how old he was. He could be four hundred years old for all Dirk knew. What's your name? Dirk Strider. Strider. All right. Twelve years old, tear I plus. Okay. I want you to put your hand on the ball and inject your mana into it. Simply sending it through the ball will do. The more mana you stream into it, the higher your rating. Do as much as you can, but don't hurt yourself. As long as you reach the minimum you'll have passed. Any questions? No. Then put your hands on the ball and start when you're ready. After shaking his head, Dirk looked down at the crystal ball near the edge of the table in front of him. The ball had slash marks on it, and each mark had a different number next to it. The bottom slash had the number zero on it, and the slashes numbered up to ten which was at the top of the ball. It looked like one had to literally fill the ball with mana. The stand that the ball was on also had I plus engraved on it, probably signifying that this ball was used for those who were tier I plus. 
Dirk didn't think too much though before putting a hand on it and sending through some mana. The element he chose was the dark element, and after it entered the ball, black liquid appeared and filled some of the ball. It looked like he was dumping water into it. Seeing how this worked, Dirk finally went full force. The ball seemed to consume his mana and convert it to this liquid, so he simply had to feed it to increase the level. He dumped copious amounts of mana into the ball, and it quickly surged past the halfway mark. To the side, Rita was watching with gleaming eyes. In her vision, the dark element around Dirk was flooding into him and being sent into the ball. She had never seen such a technique, and she wondered how he could so fluidly bring in mana like that. If she attempted that, her soul would scream in pain. Meanwhile, Dirk started to feel fatigued after pushing the liquid past the number 9 mark. He didn't let it bother him though as he utilized the mana lungs technique to pull in and push out mana. The technique was very efficient, and soon enough, he had totally filled the ball with that black liquid. When the ball didn't accept his mana anymore, he stopped and pulled his hand away. He still had a bit of energy left in him too. Wow. All right then. Congrats Dirk Strider, you've earned a level 10 grade. Go ahead and step to the side. Understood. Thank you. Of course. The man behind the table nodded to him with surprised eyes. Dirk simply stepped out of line as the ball on the table drained of the black liquid, leaving no evidence of the previous result. Chapter 22, Tour Hey! How did you do that? After Dirk returned to his father and sister, Rita exclaimed and pointed to the table he came from. Dirk shrugged nonchalantly. I just fed it with mana. And do you not feel tired at all? It took most of my energy, but not enough to make me pass out. Well that's insane. I know you're only a tier 1, but... Your sister was only able to get a 9 on her test, and it took everything she had. After snapping out of his surprise, Riker spoke. The minimum to pass is 5, and that's also where a significant portion of students land. I would say that 60% of students land between 5 and 6. The rest are dispersed between 7 and 9. Only the topmost can reach 10. Even then though, it's not guaranteed to see someone reach 10 every year. We might see a few in a 10-year time span. I didn't expect you to be able to reach it. Good job. Riker patted his son's shoulder. Meanwhile, Dirk was surprised about how difficult it was to get a 10. Also, he was surprised by the fact that he still had energy. If he really pushed himself, he might be able to go to an 11 or 12. This made him wonder if reaching 10 was actually that impressive. He couldn't believe that people would have such a hard time getting a high number. He had passed number 6 with but a thought, only utilizing his technique to push higher. Despite having achieved something impressive though, Dirk didn't think much of it. He knew how far away he was from someone like his father. His mother was the same. Dirk was still a weak, helpless child. He wouldn't get an inflated ego just because of a small success like this. When Riker saw that his son didn't even get a bit excited over his impressive feat, he chuckled a bit and shook his head before walking over to the man at the table. After an exchange of words, the man handed Riker the sheet with Dirk's evaluation on it. All right, we're done here. Congratulations, Dirk. You are now an official student of the Academy of Magic. I've already entered you into your classes, and all your school items are at your new residence. How about we head over there? Saying that, Riker turned and led the three out of the gymnasium. After walking a bit, they came upon an area to the side of the school. This place had large rectangular buildings that looked not unlike apartments. They were rather nice and tidy. Of course, everything that Dirk saw in the academy was nice. It seemed like a very rich school, and the fact that it was in the capital meant it was likely one of the richest institutions in the entire empire. The three didn't stop at these apartment buildings though and walked past them toward a plot of land with many small houses on it. Each house was two stories tall, but they weren't very wide. Despite being two stories, it only seemed like enough for a few people. They walked down a road for a bit before stopping at one of the average houses. It didn't look that outstanding compared to the others, 
but it also wasn't shabby in the slightest. Remember where this is, because this here is your new residence. These are the nicest places in the academy besides the teacher and staff houses. You'll be living here alone for the foreseeable future. Of course, that isn't to say that nobody can visit. Come on. Riker introduced the house before walking inside. Dirk and Rita followed, and they took a tour of the place. The first floor didn't have any walls, looking like a studio apartment. There was a table and two chairs for dining, a standard kitchen, and a living space with a couch. Then there was a staircase leading up to the second floor and one leading down into some kind of basement. The three looked around before heading up. The second floor held a hallway with two doors. The main bedroom was simple. There was a bed, a bathroom, a nightstand with a clock on it, and a closet for clothes. It was rather empty with no decorations or unnecessary items, but Dirk found it nice. He wasn't one for fancy things anyway. As for the second bedroom, it was basically identical. Dirk would only be using his extra space though. Then, the three headed back down and went into the basement. The door leading into the basement was metal and much more secure than even the front door to the house. While it was already unlocked, Riker explained to him that it used a magic code to open and that he could set the code later. Entering the basement, Dirk was greeted with a dense mana environment. The room had nothing in it, not even a chair. Riker explained its desolation. This is a place where you can come to meditate and practice magic. And, should you get into alchemy, enchanting, or smithing, you can get tools and stations to put in here. Think of this as a magic workshop for all your magical needs. Dirk nodded. The mana in this room was nice, and while he didn't really need it right now, he was sure it could help him in the future. Forming his first mana heart required dense mana, so this room would help with that. As for whether he would pursue any of these crafting professions, he would have to think about it. Now, a few things you need to know. You'll have to take yourself to classes every day. As for food and supplies, they'll be delivered to you every five days. I've already arranged for you to be brought meats and other foods. I guess now's the time where you also need to learn how to cook. Cooking is an important skill to know. As for visitors, anybody can come or go at any time. The academy doesn't monitor your every action. However, as your father, please exercise self-control when it comes to girls. You're going to hit puberty soon and I know how tempting it can be to bring a girl back home, especially when you live alone. But until you're an adult, I don't want you getting into any relationships, at least not any serious ones. Magic comes first, understood? Yes sir. Dirk answered dully. Was he really getting the talk? Self-control wasn't an issue for him. He could keep raging hormones in check. After all, he had to do it in the super soldier program. However, since the topic was brought up, Dirk thought about it a bit more. What was a relationship like? He had never gotten involved with anyone before, and liking someone was a foreign concept to him. Even Ava was just a friend. What if he started to like someone? What did it feel like to have someone that liked you? Dirk was curious, but also apprehensive. He didn't forget that he was only twelve here. Getting into a relationship with anyone his age would be weird for him. Dirk pondered, but he didn't let it show on his poker face. Seeing him respond so bluntly, Riker smiled. Anyway, that's the housing situation. Here's the keys. Keep them in a safe place, and don't give them to anyone. You're actually only getting this house because your mother said you could handle the responsibility. Usually I would have you put into a dorm with one or two others. Oh. That reminds me. I have a certain rule that all your siblings abide by at the academy. Remembering something, Riker spoke seriously. Dirk straightened subconsciously. In the academy, there's going to be many conflicts. They can be political, verbal, or physical. This place is one of competition, so fighting is only natural. However, there are a few people who will wield the statuses of their parents or teachers to oppress others. None of my children are going to be one of those people. So, I don't care what happens, you will not use my name or the Strider family name as you please. 
you will solve your own conflicts by your own power. The only time when you can use my name is when you are in mortal danger, but even then my name won't necessarily be a valid option to use. Do you understand this rule? Yes, sir. Good. Now, this rule also comes with its perks. Because your father has a high status as a Marquis, you don't need to worry about bowing down to those very kids who attempt to wield their status. Again, you solve conflicts by your own power, and there's nothing that can stop you from fairly beating someone. Basically, I'm solving all the political conflicts automatically. You only need to worry about the physical and verbal ones. All right, enough of that. Let me take you on a tour through the school. Tomorrow there's an entrance ceremony, and you'll also need to know where your classes are. Saying that, Riker spun around and left the house. Dirk and Rita followed, and they went on to explore all the various facilities throughout the school. First, Riker took him to all of his classes. This year, Dirk was enrolled in five classes. The first was general education where they taught him things like history, advanced mathematics, world studies, and more. The second was his body refining class where they were taught combat arts and trained to increase their stamina and endurance. After that, there was one class for each of Dirk's dark, earth, and fire elements. He would be learning spells and rune theory in those classes. They would also serve as time to accumulate mana and train one's technique. These classes took up a lot of his day. From 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. he would be in classes, totaling nine hours of class time and one for a lunch break. This was a pretty long time to be in class, but Dirk didn't really mind. He wanted to learn the things they were teaching. Plus, this still left him with enough time to work out before and after class. As for training his mana technique, he could do that throughout the day and just before he went to sleep. After some thinking, Dirk was able to revise his daily schedule and pleasantly found that he could maintain the things he'd been doing. And since he had already finished destroying the skin of his hands and feet, he didn't need to worry about being partially disabled. He could continue doing destruction cycles and simply deal with the pain it would cause. That reminds me, I gotta move on to my legs and finish off my upper body. After that though, I'll need to do my head and face. That's not going to be fun but oh well. Dirk shook his head at the inevitable scene he would cause. He couldn't get out of destroying anything, and the last things he needed to do were the lower body and the skin from his neck up. For the lower body, he would have to deal with the skin on his but being destroyed for a while. That would hurt when sitting, but at least it was hidden. But his face? He would go bald and look like a hideous monster for a few weeks. He couldn't avoid it though. All he could do was either get a mask or only do one half of his face at a time. After Riker took Dirk to his classes, he moved on to some other facilities. The first place was an arena, and it was a colosseum like building that students could battle in. Apparently, the school held tournaments every six months for student rankings. Each class would fight amongst themselves, forming something of a hierarchy. It was the most participated in event in the school, and there was no lack of students wishing to test their skills and rise on the leaderboard. After they toured the Colosseum, they went on to the Magic Pyramid. In this pyramid, students could go and look at all kinds of different spell books, practice runes, practice spells, or simply meditate in peace. The place was a literal pyramid where the higher you went, the higher the mana density. Just the bottom layer held mana as dense as the one in Dirk's magic workshop at his house. While he couldn't go higher, both Riker and Rita assured him that it was many times denser up there. Riker had even been to the top, and he said it felt like swimming in a pool of liquid mana. In the pyramid were also some rooms and open firing ranges. These rooms and ranges could be used to test one's spells and techniques on test dummies. Then there was the library with many magical books, and meditation rooms where one could get absolute peace and quiet. Riker said that people often used those rooms to advance in tears since they couldn't be distracted. You could also hold a single room for up to two months at a time. Lastly, Riker brought Dirk to the Halls of Artisans. This place was the center of all magical production in the academy. All enchanting, forging, and alchemy took place here, and as soon as they entered, Dirk was hit with a wave of magical elements and boisterous yelling. 
Hey! I need two iron ingots and a bucket for oil. And when I find who took my bucket, I'm gonna roast their ass in my furnace. Where are my herbs? You! Get me three spiked leaves right now. I've got 73 seconds before this pot explodes. Somebody please tell me where the damn tongs are. How about you just pull the metal out with your bare hands? You dimwit. Ah. Who the hell took my lucky pair of goggles? Dirk was stunned as he saw people shooting between dozens of different rooms. On the right side of the hall, he could feel heavy heat and see black smoke seeping between doors. On the left, he could smell dozens of different herbal scents and see white smoke seeping between doors. The contrast between the two sides of the hall was painfully obvious. Welcome to the Hall of Artisans. Everyone pursuing one of the crafts goes here to practice and produce. On one side you have the alchemists, and the other is the blacksmiths. In the back are the enchanters, but there are less of them since enchanting is rather difficult. The two sides coexist in a strange harmony of understanding and trade. They are divided into two different factions, but the two sides trade what they make very often. The alchemists give the blacksmiths many potions, and the blacksmiths give out many forged goods like weapons or armor or whatever else is made. This helps both of them output more and promote something of an economy. It's not easy getting into one of the factions, but it is definitely worth it. Artisans can make good money, and many artisans have the ability to simply make what they need, saving them lots of money as well. I think you should try your hand at it next year. Riker introduced the place and recommended Dirk to it. Dirk just looked around for a long while. He wondered why it was so chaotic instead of quiet and orderly. Didn't people have to concentrate while crafting? Why were people yelling for last-second things? He also could have sworn that he saw a teenager run out of a room with a boiling pot of something. Did he seriously leave his station midway? Dad. Why is everyone going crazy? Dirk asked the question on his mind. Because it helps develop concentration. One needs to be able to adapt to things on the fly, and if you get easily disturbed, you won't be able to go far in your craft. You have to be able to operate in all kinds of situations. Like that boy who left his station with his solution halfway boiled. He needed materials, and didn't have anyone to rely on, so he simply brought the pot that he couldn't take his eyes off of to the warehouse where the herbs are. Granted, he probably should have done better preparations, but then again, who knows if this is his fourth go at it. Maybe he ran out of only one herb and didn't realize it while he was focusing. But he was able to think of a quick solution, and that batch may not necessarily be a failure. Quick thinking is a precious skill. This helps hone that. Dirk stayed silent as he deliberated on whether or not he agreed with the methodology. Quick wit was indeed precious, and he guessed that this would indeed help train that. Still though, he was baffled by how chaotic it all was. Though, it also looked kind of fun. He made a mental note to check out the crafts in the future. Anyway, keep this place in mind for the future. Although you probably won't be able to do alchemy very well since you don't have the water attribute, you should be able to do forging. I'll scratch alchemy off my mental note then. Dirk shrugged helplessly. The three left the Hall of Artisans soon after talking a bit more. For the most part, Riker had given Dirk a pretty thorough tour. He wouldn't even be stepping foot into some of the places until next year. This year, he just needed to stick to his classes and build up his foundation more. That was the main purpose of the first year in the academy. Eventually, Riker took Dirk back to his residence and left. Rita though decided to take him to her place so he knew where it was. There, he ate lunch and talked with Rita about the years they hadn't seen each other. Rita had matured a lot. While she was still a pretty happy-go-lucky person, Dirk could tell by her demeanor that she had grown up quite a bit. That's what it took though to wield more power. However, when Rita started talking about her experiences with dungeon diving, Dirk got interested. You remember the dungeons you read about in school right? Rita asked as she twirled a glass of water. The glass was levitating above her hand while her dark mana coddled it. Dirk nodded to her. I do. Good. Don't forget them, 
because you're going to be visiting plenty. Your first year here will be teaching you all about applied magic, general essential knowledge, and how to fight. Basically, they're preparing you for the coming years. Next year is the first year where you'll finally fight and kill something. In fact, there's an initiation ceremony where everyone has to take the life of a monster with their own skills. From then on, you have the option to enter the dungeons and fight real monsters. There, you'll be able to gain combat experience, collect loot, make money, and so on. It's very popular since everyone needs to make money, and that's both the easiest and hardest way to do it. Interesting. Do you dungeon dive? Dirk asked curiously. He was definitely interested in the dungeons. Yes, I dungeon dive. I actually have a party that I dive with. We've been working together for two years now. In the team, I'm the magic caster. I can apply various curses to monsters and deal direct damage. I gotta say though, I honestly regret not taking your offer to work out when we were kids. I've gotten injured several times simply because I wasn't flexible or nimble enough. Or when we would need to run away, I would quickly lose stamina. That's why I've been working on that void walking magic you saw me do. It's a great way to move without consuming lots of stamina. Seriously a real lifesaver. I've gotten better though. Anyway, I'm sure you'll be dungeon diving too, and I just want you to be mentally prepared for it. Though, there's also something else I should warn you about. Rita spoke seriously. You need to think carefully about how you develop your combat ability, who you meet, and what you do with your skills. While the academy encourages us to fight in the dungeons, that's only to hone our skills. Remember that we live in an empire, and the empire wants talented people working for them, killers or otherwise. Ethan chose a life in the military, and soon enough, he's going to be on a battlefield somewhere fighting actual people. Many people in the academy choose that life because they have nothing else to do when they leave. I just need you to understand that the academy is yet another bubble like the school we went to. You'll eventually have to decide whether you want to live a life of killing monsters or people. Both are dangerous and have their struggles. But I don't want you getting sucked into one without you knowing it. Alright? I understand. Dirk nodded solemnly, though inwardly he was smiling bitterly. How could he not understand that wars were fought, and nations wanted talented killers? He definitely understood far more about that reality than Rita did. Chapter 23, First Day While Dirk already understood the dark reality of war, he also started seriously contemplating Rita's words. When faced with the choice, would he go back to the life he lived? Or would he shut himself in these dungeons and hunt monsters for a living? Thinking about it, Dirk actually started having a bad feeling. In his last life, he didn't get a choice. In this life, he wondered if he would. He had always been some kind of symbol for bad luck. But he had never been able to figure out if he was the unlucky one. He didn't know if he wanted to go back to the life of fighting day after day. He could kill, and he could do it very well, but did he want to? He had fought for a leader that only saw him as a pawn to be played, a disposable dog to take care of the dirty work. The only thing special about him was that he was a strategic weapon capable of taking care of nearly any task. He was just a really strong dog. Now though, he had more of a choice. If he absolutely didn't want to, Dirk didn't need to fight anybody. Worst case, he left home, disappeared, and started a life tending to a farm or something like that. However, when he thought about living a life of mediocrity like that, he couldn't see himself doing it. He wasn't drawn to it. For once, he wanted to do something that he at least agreed with. He wanted to exercise his ability to do something, good. After all, he knew how dark humanity could be. Thinking about all the people that he was capable of helping, he couldn't shut himself away. But at the same time, he couldn't help everyone, and he wouldn't kill himself for justice. Justice was always a tricky thing in his eyes. It changed, and because of that, he couldn't define what justice was to him. Dirk had many conflicts in his head. He didn't know where he belonged. Did he belong in the dark? Did he belong on the battlefield? Did he belong in a dungeon? Should he kill people? If he did, 
What kind of people were good or bad? Did he have the right to judge people? Could he define good and bad? And what about his own freedom? Would he allow himself to be leashed by some rules again? The questions boggled his mind, and he became frustrated when he couldn't answer them. For once in his life, he didn't have a set direction. However, all that would have to be dealt with in the future. For now at least, he had things he needed to do, like magic classes. He could slowly figure out his purpose over time. Dirk hung out at Rita's house and ate dinner there, after which he left and went back to his own house. Unlocking the door with his fancy new keys, he entered the desolate living space. Well, he thought it would be desolate, but after flicking on a light, he could see luggage strewn throughout the room. He walked over to the dining table that had a note on it. It was from his mother, and it said that this was all his stuff from the house. There was also a case of healing potions for him to use. It ended by telling him to be careful. Dirk smiled after reading the note. He cast the spark spell to burn it before turning and bringing his luggage upstairs. After situating everything, he washed up before heading to bed. Beep, beep, beep. Dirk's eyes flew open when he heard an alarm. Looking at the time, he saw that it was 5 a.m. He took a deep breath before hopping out of bed. It was time to work out. Rinsing himself and putting on a pair of shorts and shoes, Dirk walked out of his house and into the cold morning air. The sun hadn't yet peeked over the horizon, so everything was still dark. Dirk didn't mind it though. He had memorized the layout of the school, and his eyes were more sensitive to light than normal as per his cybernetic enhancements. He could see fine and already knew the route he would take on his run. With a direction, Dirk ran onto the street that wound through the neighborhood. Soon, he left the neighborhood and ran past the apartments, maintaining a single, steady pace. After the apartments, he ran across the front of the school. Then, he ran around to the Colosseum, past it to the Magic Pyramid, down toward the Hall of Artisans, and then back to the neighborhood. This route was a loop that essentially circled the school, and it was a whole six miles long. Dirk did three laps before going back to the house and beginning his bodyweight exercises. By the time he was finished with that, it was 8 a.m. The entrance ceremony was at 9, so he prepared himself to go. He washed up, ate some food that had been put into a cooler before by his father, and got dressed. He left for the Colosseum 15 minutes before the start of the ceremony, and as he walked, he pondered over his workout. Things are starting to get easier and easier. I can deactivate my nanites to prevent them from giving me more energy and recovering quickly, but anima is starting to show its effects. I'm simply stronger, faster, and have more stamina. Soon enough, these workouts aren't even going to be enough to get me tired unless I go for several hours. I should see if I can find any way to fix that. Dirk had been thinking about this issue for a while now, and finally, it was starting to become a problem. He could run for several miles as a warm-up, and he was forcing himself to go faster and faster just to get himself tired. Plus, the fact that he didn't have weights meant that he had nothing to push his muscles to the limit with. Dirk was approaching the stamina of his past life. While his strength wasn't there yet, it wasn't far. He would easily reach it in a couple more years just by growing. Anima was just that miraculous. He hoped though that the academy would have a solution to his problem. There was no way that someone in this world before him hadn't had and dealt with his very problem. And since the academy was so amazing, they had to know of a way to help. Dirk would be shocked if they didn't. Well, I have a class for it, so let's just wait for that. With that, he put the thoughts to the back of his mind and looked around. Since the ceremony was about to start, there were crowds of people around him of all ages and sizes. Everyone was flooding to the Colosseum as well, and the atmosphere was exciting. After all, everyone here was accepted into the academy. For the New Bloods, they were thrilled to have been accepted by such a prestigious institution. For the veterans, they were focused on working even harder toward their goals. Everyone had something to do here and a goal to achieve. Dirk simply made his presence faint as he blended into the crowd. Since he was only twelve, he was rather small and capable of slipping through places. After a bit of maneuvering, he passed through the entrance to the Colosseum. 
walking through the gates, he saw signs that designated where the students of each year sat. He quickly found the first-year sign and followed it up to the seating area where he found a random seat and sat down. It looked like there were already a few hundred students around his age there. Dirk guessed they were his classmates. Please take your seats. There are three minutes until the ceremony starts. Suddenly, on the stage of the Colosseum, a woman behind a podium spoke into a magical device that amplified her voice. Hearing it, the crowds entering and mingling around the place quickened their paces. In only a few minutes, nearly all of the empty seats had been filled. When things had fallen into place, the woman walked up to the podium again. The Colosseum quieted as everyone sensed her presence. She was a beautiful woman wearing some fancy robes that did nothing to hide her curves, and all the pubescent boys near Dirk were eyeing her like a nice slab of meat. Welcome everyone. I congratulate you all for being accepted into the Horizon Magic Academy. Out of the thousands upon thousands of applicants across the empire, only you all were chosen. This is a high honor, and I hope you all do your best to make the most out of every day. For the dawn of Horizon. For the dawn of Horizon. The Colosseum reverberated the woman's pledge, creating a large echo. Dirk just watched on. You can't have a strong nation without some nationalism. He had also learned these basic pledges and salutes. The woman went on to say a short speech about how lucky all the students are and how they needed to push themselves so as to become powerful individuals worthy of respect. This went on for around ten minutes before she finally passed on the mic. Now, without further ado, let me set the stage for our headmaster. Duke of the Empire and Tier 8 Magus, put your hands together for Headmaster Hillshire. Hmm. Hearing that name, Dirk perked up as the crowd roared with cheers. He looked down and saw Duke Hillshire step on stage. Clad in royal robes, he stood and smiled valiantly while looking through the crowd. Seeing the headmaster look upon them with fond eyes and an encouraging smile, all the new students were instantly drawn to like him, and the returning students cheered for him even more. From the almost fanatic cheers, it seemed like the entire academy idolized this man. The instant the duke put his hand up, the entire crowd quieted. Dirk was instantly baffled. Who could command this kind of respect and reverence? It was like the duke was actually the king. Thank you all for your warm welcome. You may simply call me Headmaster. Like the lady before me, I congratulate you all on successfully entering the Academy. Here at the Academy, you all will struggle, experience hardship, and claw your way to a more powerful existence. The road is long and hard, but I assure you that I will do everything in my power to open up the largest road for you all. While we may compete and fight here in the Academy, at the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters brought together through the pursuit of a higher purpose. You will be seeing a lot of me throughout your days here, and that's because I'm here to help each and every one of you. I don't ask that you treat me as the headmaster, but as a teacher here to guide you. If strength is what you desire, and you wish to be men and women who bring good into the world, then I will show you that path. Simply follow me, and together we will forge a path to greatness. The Duke spoke with deep and bold words full of spirit. The kids throughout the stadium were mesmerized, and nobody made a peep. When he finished, the place was quiet for several seconds before cheering erupted even louder than before. Dirk sat there silently though. This man really is one for the people. No wonder they love him so much. Though, if anyone were to be a good headmaster, it would be him. He loves raising children. Dirk thought back to the two times he visited the Duke. The first time, he had gotten a good idea of how much the Duke loved kids. Later, his father told him that the Duke had been trying to have children for over eighty years with his wife. In all that time, they have had nineteen. From that, one could easily see how kid-crazy the Duke was. When Dirk thought about it, it made sense that he was the headmaster of such a school. The man was accomplished, strong, and loved being a mentor. Who better to run the academy? Though I'm surprised father is brothers with him. I wonder how they came to get so close. At least I know why father works at the academy now. Dirk's thoughts moved about as the duke went off the stage. After him, many other staff members introduced themselves to all the students. 
none of them particularly cared though. It seemed like the headmaster was the only one with all the attention. The rest were bland compared to him, no matter how amazing they tried to make themselves look. After almost an hour, the speeches finally came to an end. By this time, all the students simply wanted to get on with the day. Luckily, after the beautiful lady came back on stage, she sent them off with a brilliant smile. Dirk took a deep breath as he stood up with all the other students. He walked quickly and was one of the first to exit the Colosseum, dodging the crowds that already started building up. Instead of walking home though, Dirk turned to the main building of the academy where all the classes were. Today, the schedule was modified, but they all still had class. Dirk made his way to his first class which was general education. The corridors were mostly empty as Dirk walked with steady steps. His feet made no more than a faint tapping sound as they stepped on the solid wood flooring. The wood under his feet was almost pitch black, contrasting with the white stone walls. When Dirk arrived at the classroom, he walked through the door that was already open. Inside, the teacher was sifting through papers on her desk. She didn't lift her head even when Dirk walked up to her desk. Teacher? What? The woman was startled and jerked backward, flicking her pen at Dirk. His body automatically bent to the side and his hand reached out and grabbed it. He settled back in his original position the next second like nothing happened. Who? You? Who are you? My name is Dirk Strider. I believe I'm one of your students. Dirk spoke simply, and the teacher's heart settled down. She took a deep breath before taking out a roster and looking through it. Sigh, I see. Sorry Dirk. I didn't see you come in. Ah, you can take a seat wherever you wish. You're the first one, so you get first pick. Thank you. Here's your pen. Oh, thanks. The teacher took the pen from Dirk's outstretched hand. As he went to go pick a seat though, she pondered curiously. How was he able to catch her pen? Those were some fast reflexes. Dirk walked up the stairs that led to higher desks. These desks looked like those of a college lecture hall. From Dirk's count, he found that at least 70 kids would be able to fit in this room. He took the desk at the highest level and sat on the edge closest to the staircase. Not long after he sat down, more kids started to pile in. They came in groups of three or four, and the classroom quickly got noisy. The teacher simply herded them to the desks, telling them that they could pick whatever seats were open. As this happened, Dirk sat with his eyes closed and trained his man alongs a bit. The process was more gentle though in an attempt to not disturb the surrounding mana too much. All right class. Settle down. My name is Ms. Adrisha, and I'll be your general ed teacher for the year. We're going to be learning about a lot of different things, but don't worry about getting thrown off. We'll be doing this in sections so it'll be easy to keep up. All right, each of you should have three books in front of you. Go ahead and open the history book and turn to the first section. We'll take a little glimpse of all the things we'll be learning about this year. All the students followed directions and listened to the teacher as she outlined all the books and what they would be focusing on. There were three books at the seat of every student as well as a bag to hold them in. The first was the history book, second was the world studies book, and third was mathematics. These were the same subjects that Dirk learned about in the children's school, but he knew they would hold different information here. After a while, the teacher was done going through the history book. Just from the introduction, Dirk could tell how much more information was in there. It was more in-depth and held more specific details unlike in the children's school where everything was vague. It also talked about the general history of the world, including other nations. Next, they opened up the World Studies book. In there, it talked about not only other nations and their cultures but also the dungeons and how they operated. This book held a lot more information that Dirk actually wanted. If he was to dungeon dive in the future, he wanted to know what the hell dungeons were. Lastly there was mathematics, but the teacher didn't touch upon that a lot. By the time they were done, there were only five minutes left in class. Everyone simply hung around and discussed stuff until the bell rang, where they all rushed out and moved to their next class with their new books in hand. 
Dirk hoisted his book bag and walked out as well. His next destination was the gymnasium. It only took a couple minutes to arrive. After walking in the doors, he found he wasn't the first one. A bunch of kids were hanging around the place, talking and laughing about whatever they had on their minds. However, there were surprisingly few. Only forty kids were present, and Dirk didn't see any more people trickling in. He simply walked over to one of the walls where there was a bench and sat down. In this gym, there were two other large rooms that were used as lockers and for changing. Dirk made a mental note to start bringing a change of clothes. Ha! Huh. Chapter 24, Classes Slash Eccentric So we are in the same class. Now we can continue our training. Ava beamed as she took up a spot next to Dirk. She had been worried that she wouldn't see him again, but now she was content. Choosing to take the body refining course felt like the best decision she ever made. Dirk nodded to her, but he had other thoughts. Depending on what they did in this course, they may not be able to practice anything. It would have to be on their own time. Still, he was happy that she was there. It was nice to have someone familiar there with him. What was your class before this? Dirk asked as they waited. I had my magic class. For the water element. So you have the water attribute? Yes. It's my only one though. Is your affinity high at least? Yeah. It's 97%. That's good. You didn't have to tell me though if you didn't want to. That information is best kept a secret. No, it's fine. I trust you. Dirk thought about that for a second before nodding. Ava's cheeks also reddened a bit, but she didn't mind. It was the truth. Well, I have a suggestion for you. My father said that one needs the water attribute to be good in alchemy. It might be something to consider since you have it. I see. I'll take a look. But we can't do that stuff until next year, right? Correct. It would be enough to simply think about it this year. Right. Ava nodded in agreement, and they both went quiet. It wasn't long after though that they heard a shout. Everyone gather up. Around me. The kids all heard this booming voice and turned. In the middle of the gym stood a large burly man. His face was tough, his beard looking like a five o'clock shadow, his head bald, and his muscles bulged from under his shirt. He looked like a really intense fitness trainer. Getting a glimpse of his imposing figure, the kids quickly gathered in front of him, including Dirk and Ava. He looked at everyone before speaking. My name is Instructor. That's all you will call me. I will obviously be your instructor for the year. I'm in charge of doing three things. Pushing you to your physical limits with exercise, teaching you combat arts, and teaching you how to utilize anima. As body refiners and warriors, we must learn how to use our body to its fullest ability so as to ensure our survival and our enemy's demise. I know all of you can use magic, but being able to use your physical body and anima is yet another insurance for your life. I myself have killed plenty of mages in the military only because they were incapable of escaping my grasp. The instructor raised his hand and clenched his fist as if he were crushing a heart, making the kids in front of him shiver. They all felt a bit more wary of this instructor who had killed before and subconsciously moved to be a little farther away from him. Becoming strong warriors will allow you to utilize more techniques and it can even supplement your magical ability. No matter what, it is not a bad thing to be learning this, only good. When the time comes that you're in a battle for your life, you will think back and thank yourselves for not neglecting your physical ability. So let's get started. I'm going to teach you the drills we will do every day. Don't forget them. Now line up. The kids all looked around them after the instructor shouted. At the halfway point in the gym there was a line. They all ran to it and lined up beside each other. Though, not all kids were quick-witted and couldn't seem to think as they just walked and glanced around. Hey! You! Move your scrawny ass over to the line. What about that don't you understand? The instructor yelled at several kids who trembled before running as fast as they could to the line. After a minute or so, everyone was standing side by side on the line. 
Finally, you all better learn this stuff quickly. Now, I will demonstrate a workout, and then all of you will do it. Keep your eyes peeled. The instructor shouted before dropping to the floor and performing an exercise. All the kids watched and none of them made a peep. Dirk and Ava were standing next to each other, and when they saw the instructor do the exercise, they glanced at each other. They already knew this one. It was likely that they already knew all of them actually. There were only so many ways to move the body after all. And sure enough, by the time the instructor had finished the last one, Ava was smiling. She and Dirk already knew all of them. She suddenly felt that this class wouldn't be difficult at all. Could they really be more difficult than Dirk's hellish workouts? Unlikely. After the instructor performed the exercises, he led the class to do an actual workout. One moment all the kids were doing suicide sprints, and the next they were doing push-ups with shaky arms. Some kids even ran over to a trash bin and threw up, falling to the floor as if they died. Meanwhile, Dirk and Ava did the workouts with ease. The entire session counted as more of a warm-up for them, and they were the first to finish everything. Even the instructor noticed how fit they were. Impressive. Hey everybody. Take a good look at these two. They're doing everything easily. This is a walk in the park for them. By the end of the year, all of you will be just like them. In fact, until you can catch up to them, all of you will be doing suicides every day. Now move. And don't vomit on the nice floor. The instructor yelled at all the kids who were slacking off or giving up. These kids hadn't yet been forced to do things that pushed them to their limits. Besides a few of the poorer ones, their lives up until now were, were relaxed and simple. Nobody was like Dirk or Ava and had already been training for a few years. The class was concluded after an hour. Before they left, the instructor told everyone to prepare clothes specific for this class starting tomorrow. He said that they would also be using the lockers inside the rooms to change and wash up a bit before leaving for classes. Until then though, they would just have to go to class nice and sweaty in their nice clothes. With a smile, the instructor waved off the dying kids after the bell rang. Dirk and Ava left the gym with light steps. So, since we won't be training hard for a while in that class, should we do our own training? Ava spoke as they walked out. Dirk thought about it. Yeah, we should. When do your classes start and end? I have three classes. The first starts at 9 a.m., and the last ends at 2 p.m. Only three? Yeah. How many do you have? Five. I'm in class from 9 to 7. Huh. That's a lot. Well, we could do things before and after I guess. After was surprised before thinking of something that would work for them. Dirk nodded at her suggestion. That works. Do you have a dorm? Yes. I see. Here's what we'll do. Meet me in front of the Hall of Artisans ten minutes after seven. I'll take you from there to my house where we'll do our workouts. House? Wait, you're in those houses? Yes. Dirk nodded as Ava's eyebrows rose. After thinking for a second though, she could only sigh. I guess you are a high noble. All right then. Good. Then I need to get to my next class. Okay. See you later. Ava waved, and they went their separate ways. Magic is the process by which our souls communicate with mana and affect the physical world. Over thousands of years, our predecessors have discovered and analyzed how our souls communicate with mana, and through this they have discovered runes. Runes are a magical language rooted in the nature of magic, not just some weird lines that we draw with the elements. Through runes we can communicate with mana and control it in a more reliable, codified way. This allows us to develop advanced spells. A teacher lectured his students not long after they sat down. All the kids couldn't help but be drawn to his voice as he spoke of ethereal concepts and drew mystical diagrams on the board. Dirk was one of the ones listening intently. He had always wondered about the workings of magic, and this was the first time he was going to get real lessons on it. In this class, I'll be teaching you all earth magic. To learn this you'll need to know about earth and runes and mana. 
Each of the elements has different runes and different theories behind them, so knowledge doesn't transfer over much from one element to the other. However, only those with more than one attribute need to worry about this. Most of you in this class only have the earth attribute anyway. But for those with more than one, you'll find that after understanding one, you'll achieve a more general understanding of how to learn another, not unlike learning languages. Now, all of you will be starting off with learning the chore magic and a couple other basic spells. We'll break each down and talk about each individual rune until all of you can fluidly cast the spells. This is a gradual process that can vary in results depending on your affinity, but none of you have affinities so low that there's any worry about not being able to cast these simple spells. Go ahead and open the books in front of you to the first section. The teacher laid things out clearly, and the students followed directions. After opening the books, they got rough ideas of what they would be learning, and the teacher even started some of the first lesson during the second half of class. Ding! 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 Before long, the bell rang, and everyone closed up. For most of the kids in the class, this was their last class of the day since they only had one attribute. However, Dirk still had two more classes, so he packed up the book and headed out. The next class was his fire class, and here the teacher did mostly the same thing as the previous one. He talked about some basic principles before getting more specific, and it ended with everyone having a general overview of what they would learn. This led to Dirk heading to his final class that taught the dark element. However, when class started, he was surprised. There's only 15 people here. Dirk counted the small number of kids. The earth class was filled entirely, holding 70 kids. The fire class had held 45, which was a bit lower but not by much. But for this class to only have 15 was odd. His questions were answered though when the teacher walked in. The teacher was a very slender man who wore flamboyant, colorful clothes and held the happiest smile one had ever seen. At first glance, Dirk had thought he was some kind of circus performer with those clothes. He had expected something dark, since this was the teacher for the dark element, but this had stumped him. Hello kids. How are you all today? You, how was your day so far? Instead of doing an introduction, the teacher walked up to a boy and asked his question. The kid was stunned for a bit. What kind of teacher was this? Um, fine? Fine? It's not fantastic? Exhilarating? Are there any girls who have caught your eye so far? Wah. And no. No? Well how could that be so? There are many pretty girls here. Oh, I remember when I was your age at this school. There were so many beauties that I couldn't choose between them all. In the end, I was caught dating four of them. You, my strapping young friend, must go out in the world and get yourself a woman. There is no room for cowards in the world of romance. How about you, young lady? What kind of meals have you eaten today? Suddenly changing subject, the teacher moved to another student, his exciting clothes moving with his body as he shifted. The girl had originally been giggling at the boy in the spotlight, but now she was nervous. She thought back to the lunch she had a few hours prior. I, I had some meat soup. Meat soup? Ah, such a wonderful food, isn't it? A mixture of the greasy meat and sweet broth. Food is a brilliant thing all races around the world seek to perfect. The excitement it brings to all our tongues is indescribable. Right. I forgot to mention my name. As if he remembered who he was, the teacher suddenly backed away from the girl and stood in the front of the class. He took up a more formal posture, but with his crazy clothes it only looked weird. My name is Gerald Vincent. I'm a tier 6 dark mage. This year, I'll be at your service. Now where's my list? Gerald spun around in place like a dog chasing his tail before reaching into his shirt and pulling out a crumpled piece of paper. He read it before his eyes lit up. Aha. Okay, so I'll be teaching you the fundamentals of dark magic. Now, the first thing you need to know about dark mana in general is that it is inherently, crazy. It's insane, bombastic, and literally out of this world. It is very unlike light magic which seeks to control everything. Gosh, 
I really do hate those with light magic. I mean, what's the point of life if you can't live it the way you want? Geralt shouted with surprising hostility, surprising all the students. Dirk also tensed up and reached for his waist, feeling a bit less secure when he didn't feel a weapon. This was an instinctive reaction when he didn't feel safe. The next moment though, Geralt returned to his brilliant happiness. Anyway, dark magic is best controlled by those who don't control it. One needs to flow with dark magic, loosening restraints and ridding thoughts of manipulating it. You must invite the darkness in, channeling it to do the things you desire. As he spoke, Geralt spun around in a dance and traced black lines with his fingers. What resulted was a rather elegant display of control, except it wasn't control. It was like he was merely following the will of the dark element, but at the same time, the dark element was following his will. The two synchronized to produce a giant black rune in midair. Dirk could feel copious amounts of the dark element radiating off of the rune. This symbol I drew in the air is one that seeks to contaminate and obliterate the light element. It would instantly kill anyone below tier 5. However, since I forgot to add a circle, it will explode in about 2 second dash dot. Boom! Before he could finish, the symbol suddenly erupted out with dark mana, filling the classroom. Dirk's soul was shaken a bit as the mana slammed into him. However, he suddenly had an idea and decided to use his mana lungs to breathe in the next moment. The super dense mana flooded into him, and the bottleneck to tier 2 that he had been struggling to get past for a year suddenly broke down. When that barrier broke down, Dirk felt as if his soul had opened the floodgates. Mana from the atmosphere flooded into him for a moment before calming, filling him with rejuvenation. Dirk's ability to sense mana sharpened at that moment. Looking back, it felt as if he had been congested all this time, and his soul was finally able to take a deep breath. This, feels nice. Dirk reveled in the feeling for a while as all the dark mana around the classroom dissipated. When everyone had settled back down, they all looked at Geralt, who was actually smiling at Dirk. Congratulations, my talented friend. You've broken past the first tier to officially enter the world of mages. Tell me, how are you feeling right now? Geralt rapidly approached Dirk, who backed into his seat with obvious caution. The previous feeling of comfort quickly disappeared. I feel nice. Nice. Yes, it's an adequate description. For the first time, your soul is going beyond what an ordinary person can accumulate. Your sense for mana has become sharper, your ability to channel it strengthened. Now, you'll follow your technique to cultivate some kind of core that will be the foundation for the rest of your magical career. You could say that you've taken a step through the gate and can finally ascend the stairs to godhood. Geralt raised his hand to the sky as if he were trying to grasp heaven itself. Dirk though only felt that the man was dangerously volatile. He didn't know how to handle such a person. However, his description was spot on. Dirk was now at the level where he could create his first man heart. He was actually a bit glad that Geralt had done what he did. Geralt looked back at him after a second of suspense. I'm excited for you, young man. What's your name? Dirk. Dirk. I will remember that name. A child who could grasp the opportunity one gave him will surely go far. In fact, I am now going to declare you my favorite student. Now. Allow me to read you all my list which tells us what we will be learning this year. Saying that. Geralt walked back down to the front and read off his crumpled paper. Dirk was stunned though. Opportunity? Geralt had done that for him? Did he see that he was on the verge of advancing? Dirk couldn't seem to get a read on that man at all. However, Dirk's face fell when he heard that he would be the favorite student. Even the other kids glanced over in pity. Who wanted to be the target of that man's attention all the time? They would all rather be the target of his ire. The rest of that class went a bit more smoothly once the students were able to handle the bundle of chaos that was their teacher. The list he read had four, bullet points on it, each pointing out a general concept like runes or mana control or spells. Apparently, this was the curriculum for the year. There weren't even any books. Finally, after a long two hours, the class ended. Each of the students left the room with confused minds. 
The teacher was eccentric and volatile, but he was nice. They couldn't seem to make up their minds about him and left with unsure steps. Chapter 25 Key After leaving class, Dirk walked straight to the front of the Hall of Artisans. He could see lots of activity inside and outside. This place didn't calm down at all. However, there was one person that stood still amongst the bustling crowds. Dirk sighed as he approached Ava, happy to get the insane teacher off his mind. Dirk! Follow me. Dirk motioned her over, and Ava took up a position on his right. The two left the crowds and headed towards the dorms, walking past to the nicer residences. Ava made sure to memorize the route she took. Luckily, each house had a number and every street a name, so when they finally arrived at Dirk's house she could remember the address. Soon, they arrived. Ava excitedly followed Dirk as he led her into his home. This is a nice place. Much better than our dorms. Plus you get to live alone. Ava complimented as they walked inside. While the place was kind of bare, it was still a house and plenty for a single occupant. Honestly, she was surprised that Dirk was even capable of living on his own. I'll go get changed. Dirk went straight upstairs, leaving Ava to her devices. She sat down on the couch, and a few minutes later, Dirk came walking down. Backyard. With a word, both of them went to the kitchen and exited to the back of the house. Each house had a backyard, except there were no boundaries between each yard. It was just one big strip of grass that connected each house next to and across from each other. Only 80 meters away he could see the backyard of the house across from his. Let's do some martial arts. Tonight I'm going to do another destruction cycle, so I might not be so effective tomorrow. All right. Where at? My calves. I also might do my hamstrings. I see. If you do, it'll hurt to sit down in classes. It'll be bearable. Now square up. We'll do some grappling first. Saying that, the two approached each other. Ava had taken off her shoes, and her clothes were light but tighter fitting. Dirk was only in shorts. He never really wore a shirt when working out, and Ava had gotten used to handling his bare body. The two quickly started their spar. They tousled with each other and allowed the other to get in plenty of throws or locks. Sparring how they did was surprisingly exhausting, and within half an hour, both were sweating. Thankfully, the cold evening breeze was there to cool them off. Thud. Ow. After Dirk did a throw, Ava landed with a pound. However, she seemed to have gotten hurt, and Dirk stopped the lock he was about to put her in. What happened? Nothing, just my antlers. They've been getting longer. Ava rubbed her head as she sat up, and Dirk nodded understandingly. He hadn't forgotten that she was a deer hybrid, and with her getting older, her antlers were getting longer by the day. They were already several inches long and were beginning to branch off. Hmm, if you have long antlers, your ability to grapple will be greatly hindered. Tactical maneuvering will also be difficult. I know. I've been thinking about it more and more. Are those antlers significant in any way? Dirk asked, but Ava froze up a bit. It was a purely curious question, but Ava already knew what he was alluding to, and that was a sensitive topic for her. Technically, no. We deer hybrids don't rely on our antlers for any functions in magic or the like. However, Dad said that our race highly values them as something like crowns. Our antlers grow to become extremely strong, and losing them is a massive shame for a deer. Only criminals get stripped of theirs, and those who lose them in battle are considered weak. So your antlers hold cultural significance? Yes. Hmm. Dirk pondered, as did Ava. He spoke after a few seconds. All right. If that's the case, what you do with them is up to you. However, it looks like they'll only become more of a problem. We may have to stop grappling in the future. Unless you cut them of course. I don't think you have any nerves in that bone, so it wouldn't hurt to cut it. Why ya? Ava stuttered a bit as he spoke about something so controversial so easily. She knew he didn't mean anything bad by it though. 
if there was one thing she came to understand about Dirk, it was that he was straightforward. This was a purely honest suggestion to make combat easier, and she couldn't disagree with his logic. Well, let's just do some striking. Dirk brushed off the topic, as did Ava. She could think about his suggestion later. The two did training for a few hours, after which Dirk made them food, albeit not good food. Since he wasn't adept at cooking, the meat he cooked came out rather leathery. Luckily, the bread was at least good, and melting cheese on it was easy. After the two powered through the tough meat, they enjoyed the bread. After that, Ava left in the dark of night after making plans to do some training in the morning. Dirk offered to escort her home, but she said she could just jog. The dorms weren't far away and it would only take a couple minutes to get there. With that, they bid each other good nights. The next morning, Dirk woke up at the crack of dawn. After doing his morning routine, he went outside and felt the cold morning air. Around this time of year was fall, so it was chillier than normal. He went on to do some martial movements outside, a form of meditation he was taught. It consisted of fast and slow movements, powerful and light strikes. Each movement transitioned into the other, and by the end he would come full circle, repeating the process as many times as he wished. Not long after he started, Ava arrived. After knocking and getting no response though, she went around the back and found him doing his movements. She didn't say anything as she walked over and stood next to him, doing the same exact thing. The two moved in almost perfect sync. Dirk had also taught Ava these movements, and they both had done them thousands of times. Ava had come to greatly enjoy doing these movements. They stabilized her body, calmed her emotions, relieved stress, and combined with the cold air that she had gotten so familiar with, pleased her to no end. It had become her favorite ritual to do with Dirk. The two did five cycles before coming to a stop. After completion, they opened their eyes at the same time and looked at each other. After making eye contact with Dirk, Ava broke out in a brilliant smile, almost laughing with delight. Dirk tilted his head as he unconsciously smiled a bit as well. You seem to be in a good mood. Sorry, I'm just happy. I can't control my smile. Ha ha ha. Ava started laughing the next moment. She just found it hilarious that she couldn't control her happiness. It seemed like she was overflowing with it. Dirk also chuckled a bit seeing her look so giddy. That smile truly was contagious. Not long after, he found himself laughing as well. It was like the tiniest thought was the most hilarious thing ever. This stunned Ava though. As soon as he started laughing, hers died down, and she looked at him with wide eyes. After several seconds, he claimed down as well. You laughed. Hmm. Dirk turned to Ava who seemed like she was looking at some kind of exotic creature. You actually laughed. I've never seen you laugh before. I have no idea what you're talking about. Wah. No. You can't deny it. Hey go ahead and laugh again. I can tell a joke. A horse walks into a tavern dash. No jokes. It's training time. Ack. Before Ava could finish. Dirk suddenly grabbed her hand and twisted it, putting it into a lock. With just this, he turned her whole body and planted her on the floor. Ow. All right, all right. You win. Win what? Get up and let's do some striking practice. It's good for waking up the body. Ack, fine. Since when were you able to do that? Ava grunted as she stood up, rubbing her wrist. Dirk shrugged. Since always. Always? I've never seen you do it before. Because you're not at that level. Then teach me so I can beat you. I don't know if beating me is possible. At least, not with similar strengths. Dirk spoke arrogantly but truthfully. He was forced to be the best at all forms of combat and was trained in every way to kill a person. If it were a fight on similar grounds. Dirk was confident in being able to kill anybody else first. Not even people who were faster, stronger, or bigger would deter him. His combat sense was simply beyond the norm. After shaking out her wrist, Ava went over to start some striking practice. 
the two landed blow after blow on each other, but this time, Dirk went quite a bit harder on her. There were two reasons for this. 1. Ava no longer had to worry about her parents, so there was no need to hide bruises. 2. She was steadily rising in combat ability, so Dirk wanted to teach her more. Meanwhile, Ava was still a bit surprised at how Dirk had so easily disabled her. The process was fast, efficient, and caught her off guard. She had been vigilant since she made the daring decision to tease him, but even then she couldn't predict or react to stop anything. It seemed so effortless on his part too. With that one move, he had disabled her, and she got a glimpse of his true ability. It was a bit scary knowing he could easily take her out without her having the ability to resist. But when she felt his hard hits, her determination rose. She was thinking the same thing as him, and that was how she was ready for the next level. Thus was their morning training. After two hours, the two stopped and went inside to eat. Ava's body now had several bumps and purple blotches in it, but she didn't mind it. She could handle this much, though that didn't mean it wasn't very uncomfortable. Dirk had actually offered her some of his healing potion, but she turned it down. He needed them for his brutal anima training. Her injuries were nothing compared to that. After another hour, the two were walking off to their classes for the day. The night before, Dirk had indeed done a destruction cycle on both his calves. The skin was all cracked and raw, looking exceptionally painful as if someone had continuously carved it up with knives. However, Dirk didn't really care about it, and he went to classes as he normally would. Naturally, as Dirk walked down hallways, many eyes were drawn to his destroyed skin. People's eyes went wide and many gasps were heard as they gazed upon those hideous wounds. None of them could imagine what could have caused something like that. Dirk noticed the reactions of the people around him, but he didn't mind and entered his classroom. There wouldn't be much more of him destroying his skin, and he estimated he could reach Tier 3 in three months. His general education class went by uneventfully. The first book they would be going through was history, and they were only just getting started. After that came the anima class where all the students were yet again driven into the ground under brutal training. The only exceptions to this were Dirk and Ava who did everything with ease. After that were the magic classes. Earth and fire were normal for Dirk. The teachers began introducing them to very simple magics and they were now in the process of learning the runes. This was how a normal class would go. But when Dirk entered his dark element class, all that normality was thrown out the window. Good afternoon, my wonderful class. I'm so happy that all of you are here today. Isn't living to see yet another day the most beautiful thing in the world? The cool breezes, the bright sun, the green grass. Hey you! What was your favorite thing that happened today? Like last time, Geralt entered class with the sunniest disposition and pointed someone out, asking a question. Having seen it before, the student was able to respond better. Uh. I guess I had some fun in my dorm this morning. That's great. Friends truly are some of the most precious things to us. I had a friend once who lost his life to a tier 8. He burned his very soul to severely injure that godlike figure. It was such a glorious battle. At that moment, I couldn't have felt happier for him. Garrel spoke with heartfelt emotion, and the rest of class couldn't help but feel both happy and sad. Glory was something they all longed for, and to hear that someone was able to go out in a blaze of glory was worthy of respect. However, Dirk felt something was off. Just as this feeling surfaced, a student asked a question. Teacher, what tier 8 was it? Ah, I believe it was a tier 8 from the hybrid empire, Unity. The battle occurred within the empire, right outside the man's house. This friend of mine was attempting to woo a woman but who would have thought that she was married to that tier 8? That tier 8 couldn't accept my friend entering her bedroom to give her flowers, so he decided to kill him. Ah, such an injustice. Why can't a man pursue love without someone always getting in the way? Hearing this, all the students suddenly felt a lot less sorry, and their sense of respect for this friend plummeted down to nothing. Was your friend a pervert? Who goes after another man's wife? and into their bedroom no less. Dirk wanted to facepalm as he confirmed his suspicions. 
nothing about this man was normal, not even his friends. A glorious battle? It was just a man taking care of a perverted intruder. He couldn't even be sure if the other details of the story were correct, like if the man really was a tier 8, or if this friend could actually injure a tier 8. Anyway, this is not the time for mourning a long lost hero. I will teach you all how to advance your ability to wield the dark element so that you can pursue the loves you all wish. Nobody will stand in the way of my students' happiness. With one last proclamation, Gerald began the lesson. Meanwhile, Dirk was wondering if he wanted to learn about the dark element anymore. Would he go crazy like Gerald if he did? Weary as he was though, Dirk couldn't deny that this teacher of his was kind of brilliant. When he actually taught, Dirk was able to thoroughly understand many concepts, and runes that he previously couldn't grasp were made clear. It was like this man's words had the power to directly impart wisdom. As he learned more though, Dirk started to understand how complex the dark element was. It was like the dark element was an element of confusion, disarray, and well, darkness. It was hard to understand the workings of the element and actually control it. Everything was hidden by a veil, and it prevented Dirk from actually creating a rune. All he could do was wave it around like Gerald did. Because of that, he immediately knew that learning this element would be much different and more difficult than learning his earth and fire elements. After that class ended, Dirk went home. On the way, he actually ran into Ava who was heading over at the same time. The two walked together, and after they arrived and Dirk changed, they went on to do a workout. After three hours, the two stopped and gasped for breath on the floor. The night was cool and the grass below them was soft. Dirk looked up in the sky and saw many stars and the two moons, one dark gray and one white. No matter how many times he looked at them, he couldn't get used to it. He would still raise his head expecting to only see one like on earth. Hey! Dirk! Ha! Huh. I heard some students talking about the bi-yearly tournaments. There are still six months to go, but everyone is eager to fight. What do you think about it? I'm not sure. Dirk pondered as Ava turned her head towards him. The only reason I would want to compete is to test my magical abilities. I don't know though how quickly I can develop them. I can still only do chore magic. Well obviously. We've only been at the academy for two days. Hmm. What tier are you at? Still tier I plus. I'm close to breaking through though. I see. I have a suggestion. Yesterday, I was still struggling with my bottleneck, but when my teacher released some dense mana, I was able to intake it and break through. Dense mana will probably help you too. Wait, really? So you're tier 2 now? Yes. Nice. Congratulations. Advancing to tier 2 isn't much to get excited about. Anyway, in my house, there's a basement room that is meant to be a magic workshop. It has dense mana, so it could help you. Oh wow. But, are you sure it's okay to let me use it? Ava asked cautiously. While she and Dirk were good friends and were casual with each other, there was still a difference in their statuses. In the world of nobles, Dirk had the backing and status of a prince. While her father was an earl, only one level below Dirk's parents, that single level was massive. This was because in the Horizon Empire, these noble titles were earned through prestige and absolute power. In fact, her father had told her some scary things about Dirk's own father, things that resulted in the title he has today. It was this difference that, despite Dirk utterly ignoring it, still carried some weight in Ava's mind. This was especially so when he tried to do things for her that came from his power as the son of a high noble. He had the house because of this power, and he wanted to let her benefit from it. This was a prime example. Hearing Ava's question though, a lot less conflict ran through Dirk's mind as he answered simply. Of course it's okay for you to use it. It's just sitting in a room. However, Dirk suddenly went quiet as he thought about when she would use it. In the mornings they trained, and it was the same at night. Her only free time was the time after she got out of class. But Dirk was still in class during that time. If he wanted her to go by the most efficient schedule, he would have to let her in while he was away. 
This brought him to a dilemma. How much did he trust Ava? Did he trust her enough to have unrestricted access to the house he was given by his parents? There were valuable potions that he used for healing just sitting in his room. He couldn't allow anything bad to happen to the stuff he was entrusted to. Both the house and the potions were the investments his parents put into him. Dirk stayed quiet for a while, confusing Ava. Since he was thinking about something, she just let him be. After a while, he spoke to invite her inside to eat, not completing his original train of thought. He didn't talk as he cooked both their meals. This time's cooking was a bit better than last time's, at least. Finally, when dinner was done and Ava prepared to leave, Dirk stopped her. He walked up to his room and rummaged around a bit before pulling out the only spare key. When he walked down and put the key in Ava's hand, her heart started thumping out of her chest. W8 Dash. When you get out of class, you can come to the house and go down to the basement. Come with me. Without letting her retort, Dirk walked down the stairs and to the basement door. Ava followed and watched as he entered the code right in front of her eyes. The code is Black Cat. Just write it in with your mana and it'll open. Ava was quiet as he opened and relocked the door to prove that the password was correct. Her mind, though, was anything but quiet. Chapter 26, Mini Heart Ava was conflicted as Dirk gave her full access to the house. She was also emotional. She now knew why he was quiet for the hour that they ate dinner. He was deliberating on whether he should give her the key. While one could say that the fact he was deliberating showed his lack of trust, she didn't see it that way. She instead realized that he was being open with her, that he was giving her a chance. They were friends, but even good friends may not trust each other with sensitive things. Giving someone access to your home was a big deal. Allowing them to use it while you were away was an even bigger deal. And considering that these houses were not easily owned in the academy, doing this was unheard of. Ava was almost overwhelmed by how much Dirk was entrusting to her. And it was all so she could train her mana. She wanted to reject it, but at the same time, she wanted to prove herself. Rejecting might also mean distancing herself from Dirk. She didn't want that. The two walked back up to the living area and Dirk saw Ava to the door. Before she left though, she turned and wrapped Dirk up in a big hug. It was brief but deep, and afterward she saw herself off. Dirk closed the door before cleaning the place and going down to the basement himself. He pushed all other thoughts out as he sat down in the middle of the metal room. Since yesterday, he had been wondering how to go about creating his first man heart. He had his AI pull up the book, and he read through the second section. After becoming Tier 2, one needs to accumulate and develop their mini heart. This mini heart is an agglomeration of an element, and upon creating it, the heart will act as a source of the element it's made out of. However, one needs to note that, until a heart is made for every attribute, the power to use an attribute will be lopsided. Because of this, it may be important for one to plan the order in which they plan to accumulate an attribute. Once this is settled, one can move on to accumulating the heart. The heart will be placed on top of your physical heart. Once the heart takes on form, the mana will saturate the heart and begin to travel outward through the blood and veins. Blood is a carrier for all types of energy, and the heart is the mechanism that drives energy transfer and, by extension, life itself. The process of mana being infused into the blood will happen naturally, and this forms the system by which mana flows through you. This mana blood system allows absolute control over the mana inside your body and also allows the uninhibited intake of mana from the outside. The mana blood will, by extension, augment the mana lungs, enhancing its effects. Dirk read through the section, and the more he read, the more excited he got. Basically, he would create a core of mana on top of his heart. This core would be made of a single element. Once the core was completed, it would push him to tier 3. However, Dirk had to be careful about his choice. If he decided to make an earth element heart, he would have lots of earth mana at his disposal and enhanced control over it, but the same wouldn't be true for his other two attributes. The other two would lag behind until he could create hearts for them. So for however long it took to create the other hearts, he would basically be relying on one single attribute. 
so he had to choose the most optimal one, but he didn't know which one that was. He hadn't learned many spells and developed his magical ability. However, he was able to quickly get ideas. Earth magic manipulates solids. I've seen spells in the books that can make walls of rock or launch spikes. But it's more defensive in general. Fire, though, is very much offensive. High heat, high damage. As for dark, I'm having trouble with it. I may be able to make a heart out of it, but my understanding of its spells and techniques lacks behind that of the other two. Until I develop more, I don't think I'll be able to tackle it and effectively utilize it. So I should choose between earth or fire. Offense or defense? Dirk pondered for a long while. In the end, he chose earth. While it was indeed more defensive, he also had the metal specialization which, according to his teacher, enabled the creation of metal objects and in general stronger formations. This meant his walls and spikes would be stronger than normal. Earth was a mixture of offense and defense, and he preferred the well-roundedness. Plus, his affinities were higher than that of the fire attribute. While he couldn't feel differences in his ability to detect and control the two elements, it may affect his ability to form spells or reduce their effectiveness. Until he knew for sure, he would rather take the more reliable route. With that decision made, he decided to start. The book said he needed to condense the element in a ball on top of his heart. Do this for long enough and the mana would begin to remain there permanently, forming a core or heart. However, the condensation process was a bit special. It required him to continuously contract and expand the core, not unlike how he did when training mana lungs. The rate of contraction and expansion was according to the rate of the heartbeat. Every time it beat, he would contract, and in the time between the beats it would be expanded. The only difficult part about this was actually making the mana dense enough. The book said that he needed to make it as dense as possible, and the most optimal density must be three times denser than environmental mana. As he got stronger, the density would increase until he finally formed a proper heart. Finally, there was one final thing he needed to do upon forming the heart. The book said that when the heart took sufficient form, he was to enchant it with a single rune. This rune would be responsible for matching the beats of the mana heart to the beats of the physical heart. It would also allow mana to better inject itself into the bloodstream. Technically, the rune wasn't actually necessary. However, the book highly recommended it. Not forming the rune should only be done if the person absolutely couldn't. Naturally, Dirk planned to form it. There was no reason why he shouldn't. With that, Dirk assumed he was knowledgeable enough to start. However, he remembered that he had specialized attributes, and the introduction said something about a different kind of heart needing to be formed in that case. Interface Awaiting Orders Search the Mana Heart Book for text relating to specialized heart formation. Searching Dirk waited, and in a few seconds, results came up. Dirk took a look at the page. For those with a specialized attribute, a specialized mana heart needs to be formed. This heart will be similar in function to a basic heart, except one needs to mix the two types of mana with each other. For example, for the fire element and lightning specialization, one needs to condense an equal mixture of both fire and lightning mana in the process of heart formation. Should one only condense the basic fire element, they will become lacking in their ability to utilize the lightning element. And since a lightning heart will not be formed, this could remain permanent unless they take measures to remedy the fire heart. However, fixing a heart is extremely difficult, and the results of a fix may not improve one's situation much. Thus, it is advised to form a heart of equal mixture, even if it may be more difficult and time-consuming. Dirk read this and nodded. Applying the same logic to his earth and metal attributes, he would need to condense a 50 50 ratio of earth and metal element. This wasn't impossible at all, though controlling two different elements at the same time was indeed difficult. He had no doubt that it would prolong the formation process, but he wasn't really concerned about that. That would defeat the purpose of him choosing the earth element first anyway. He found the metal specialization essential. With that clarified, he went on to officially start. He rid himself of other thoughts and concentrated on the elements around him. 
he could see fragments of darkness, chunks of brown earth, gray shards of metal, hot sparks of fire, and electric sparks of lightning. All these elements flowed around them like an atmosphere of elemental energy. In the outside world, mana wasn't very dense, almost like normal air. But in this basement room that condensed mana for him, it seemed more like a liquid, albeit a thin one. This ambient mana was about twice as dense as outside. With that advantage, Dirk only needed to condense it another 50% before forming the heart. Knowing that, he grabbed both the earth and metal mana around him in equal amounts, pulling it in and condensing a ball of the mixture right on his heart. It took a good amount of effort. He had to control two different types of mana, condense them both in equal amounts, and then do contraction cycles. For a while, Dirk struggled to do the multitasking, but after getting used to it some, he was able to move on to the contractions. To do this, he steadied the rhythm of his heart at 60 BPM. From there, he quickly pressed the mana in on itself every second for a fraction of a second, matching the heartbeat. When he did this, he could feel some of this earthen and metallic mana seep into the blood in his heart. It was a weird feeling, but an oddly refreshing one. However, it was only a tiny bit, like a drop of ink in an ocean. It would take many, many contractions to saturate his blood. The unfortunate thing was that this process of contraction and expansion was tiring. Dirk was only able to do this for 30 minutes, after which he stopped in exhaustion. When he did, the ball of mana dissipated, leaving nothing like a core at all. It was like he didn't even train for 30 minutes. Damn. This is going to take forever. I might be able to do this training three or four times a day. But if I train mana lungs, that'll go down. I don't want to stop mana lungs since it still helps my soul improve on strength, so I'll have to equal out the types of training. I'm going to be tired all day. Dirk sighed as he thought of the tiresome days ahead. If he pushed himself to the max, he would be mentally tired all hours of the day. While he didn't really want to go through such torture, he motivated himself by thinking of how he would be able to handle mental exhaustion better afterward. Struggle now so I can struggle better tomorrow. He closed his eyes and spoke a motto to himself. This was something Gray would say a lot. He believed that since Dirk would live a life of constant struggle, he should struggle hard now so the struggle in the future could be born easier. Why fight the struggle if you had no choice but to endure it anyway? Dirk eventually came to take up this thought process. It wasn't willingly though. It took several years of breaking him down to finally accept the life of hardship. Even then though, it wasn't accepted blindly. Gray gave him purpose in the things he did, and that ultimately allowed him to accept the struggle. He believed that the pain was always for something, even if he didn't know what it was. This kept him going. It kept him pushing even when he felt everything was hopeless. In times of despair, the future could be both bleak and bright. He moved forward to figure out which it would be. And he never stopped since there was always more future ahead. Dirk brooded for a while, memories of Grey popping into his mind. When his chest started to hurt though, he pulled himself back to reality. He couldn't allow himself to indulge in grief. He had twelve years to do that. Now he needed to focus on his new life. He calmed down as best he could before leaving the basement. Unfortunately, he wasn't as calm as he thought he was, and he went straight to bed without even washing up like he usually did. That night's sleep wasn't a comfortable one, a faint sense of sorrow permeating from his person. From that day forward, Dirk would train his mana throughout the entire day. While it was harder to do so outside where the ambient mana wasn't dense, that was just yet another way he pushed himself to do better. He would alternate between developing his new heart and training mana lungs before leaving school and going home to work out. Now though, whenever he came home, he would always find Ava in the magic workshop training her own mana technique. Upon seeing him return, Ava would leave the room and join him in exercise as she did in the morning. The two switched between basic exercise and martial exercise. Every time they did combat training though, Dirk got progressively harder on her. He also started teaching her new techniques. Thus established their daily routine of waking, training, learning, training, and sleeping. Both advanced steadily, 
and before they knew it, three months had passed. It was at this time that Dirk was sitting in the living area. He was contemplating, and Ava was cooking their dinner. Ever since he gave her the house key, she had taken to cooking their meals. While Dirk had to help her at first, after a while she got the hang of it herself. Now, she never let him get up to do anything after they finished training. Hey Ava. Yes? Do you know if they sell masks in the academy? Masks? Ava tilted her head while stirring a pot of soup. She thought about the question before shaking her head. I've never seen anywhere that does. Why? I've finished destroying all of my skin, except for the skin on my face. Wait, you have to destroy that too? She turned around, shocked. The other body parts were fine since they were mostly hidden and didn't inhibit many functions. But the face? That was out for everyone to see. Plus, what would happen if his eyelids or lips were destroyed too much? His lips would be in constant agony and he may not even be able to close his eyes. Plus, just thinking of the hideous look he would have to walk around the school with was humiliating. Hearing her, Dirk sighed before shrugging. Yes, but it's fine. I was thinking about doing half of my face at a time. Since there's no masks, I'll just go without one. No. That's horrible. You shouldn't have to walk around and humiliate yourself like that. This technique of yours is ridiculous. It's fine. Do you really think I care about a bit of embarrassment? No. But still. Wait, you won't come out with any scars, will you? No. I haven't gotten any so far. That's good. Ava sighed in relief. If this technique scarred him everywhere then that would truly be unbearable. He would have to go around looking like a monster. Hmm, it'll be interesting going around bald for a while. You'll be bald too? The technique destroyed the hair on my arms and legs so I assume it'll do the same for my head. While it'll regrow, I'll be without hair until it's finished. Why the hell did you ever choose this technique? Ava shouted in unfairness for Dirk while slamming the pot of soup down on the table. Dirk went over to eat, and Ava stared at him as he did so. He felt this stare and knew what she was thinking. He spoke before she could. You don't need to help me. I'll be fine. It'll only be bad for a week anyway. My recovery speed is much faster now that my animal levels have gone up. You let me know if you need anything. Sure. Saying that, both of them dug into the food. Knock knock knock. At that moment though, there was a knock at the door. Dirk frowned until he heard a voice come from outside. Dirk! Open up! Or are you asleep? Coming. Hearing Rita's voice, Dirk smiled a bit and went to open the door. When he did, he could see her standing outside with a bright smile. Hey! Miss me? That expedition was long. Most of them are like that. The dungeons are large, so, who's this? Wait, dear girl. After walking in, Rita went quiet as she saw Ava sitting at the table. Ava was confused as well since she didn't recognize Rita. Rita, this is Ava. Ava, this is Rita, my sister. Oh! Nice to meet you. Hearing the name, Ava quickly stood and walked over. Meanwhile, various thoughts ran through Rita's head. Dirk, you're only twelve. Yes? Wait, no. We train together. Did you not hear about that? About what? I knew that you guys are friends, but I didn't think it was this crazy. We've been training together for two years. She would come over to the house and mom would train us both. We just continued at the academy. Is that right? Rita looked between them both. Dirk rolled his eyes, but Ava became a bit flushed. Before the conversation delved any further, Dirk waved. Just come in. We only made enough food for us, but you can share some of my portion. Huh? Oh, no, it's fine. I already ate. Sighing, Rita dropped the subject and entered. Ava also went back to the table where the soup was getting cool. Ever since the start of the year, Rita had basically disappeared. 
she had told him that she was going on a dungeon dive, which could take a while. Most of the students in the higher years did that. Now, it looked like she had come back. Just looking at her, Dirk could sense a sharp combat aura. She really wasn't that happy-go-lucky child anymore. Anyway, I came by to ask about your progress. How's training? Rita spoke as she took up a spot on the couch. Dirk's table still only had two chairs. It's good. I'm about to reach rank three, and I'm already tier two. Spells are also coming together nicely. I'm close to learning several combat spells. Oh really? How many circles? Only one of them is two circle. Very good. I have no doubt that you'll be prepared for next year. Rita clapped excitedly. Spells were divided in power usually based on how many circles there were. More circles meant more functions and more mana input, so this naturally meant more power. The only other way to improve power was to form better runes, but those complex, high-level runes were still beyond Dirk. So what about Anima? What techniques have you learned? I haven't learned any. None? Why not? Hearing this, Rita was surprised. Dirk shrugged. There aren't any for me to learn. The anima class we're in hasn't taught any. Well that's obvious. But what about the one that came with your technique? My technique doesn't have one. That's impossible. Nearly all decent techniques have one. Look through your book again when you get the chance. It may also come naturally when you complete a section. Keep an eye out for any weird feelings you get when you advance. All right. Dirk nodded and continued to eat. After Rita finished talking with him though, she turned to Ava. So, Ava, how's your progress? Gee good. I'm tier 2 and rank 2. Not bad. Now what's your plans for dungeon diving? Are you going to? I think so. Ava answered unsurely. She definitely knew about how they would have the option of fighting in the dungeons next year. The kids in her classes talked about it all the time. But she wasn't sure about making a decision now. She wasn't totally confident in her ability to fight monsters. They were different than people, after all. She wouldn't necessarily be able to apply her training with Dirk. Chapter 27 Special Potion Ava pondered next year and whether she would partake in dungeon dives. Rita didn't seem to be interested in her decision though. Well, just think about it. You'll have to decide sooner or later. Anyway, it's late and I'm tired. I'll be going. Just keep it in your pants, Dirk. You too, Ava. Sigh. Dirk sighed at his sister's concern as she showed herself out. Ava just sat there with embarrassment written all over her face. Here, let me clean. Ah, yes. Wait, no. Let me do it. Ava handed her bowl to Dirk before catching herself and taking over. Dirk just rolled his eyes as she rushed to collect the dishes and joined to help. Once they were done, both went down to the basement to train their mana. After a few months, Dirk had actually made some progress with his mana heart. With his soul becoming stronger and him training non-stop, a faint outline of a mana heart was taking form on top of his physical heart. The formation was plenty slow though, and when Dirk wasn't training it some of the mana would detach from the mana heart and be taken into his bloodstream, a process that reduced some of his progress continuously and would actually dissipate the heart if he didn't train for any long period of time. This meant he couldn't slack at all or the process would take longer than normal. Luckily, he didn't have any problems with slacking. The heart became more and more corporeal by the week, but he didn't have any reliable estimation of when it would be done. He could only form it until he felt the things the book described, like a feeling of completion or solidification. He went through his series of contractions and expansions for an hour. He was able to double the time he could pulse the man heart through all this strenuous training. After that though, he was exhausted and decided to stop. After resting for a bit, he suddenly stood up and left the room. Ava heard this and followed. After going up to his room, Dirk went over to his nightstand and opened the drawer. Inside was a knife, something he had requested from his father. 
The knife was basic and there was nothing special to it, but after Dirk felt the blade, he nodded in satisfaction. It was very sharp. He grabbed it and then went back down to the kitchen. When Ava saw him with the knife, she tilted her head in confusion. But when he brought over a garbage can and sat down on the chair, her questions were quickly answered. Dirk took the knife and suddenly put it up to his forehead, shaving backward across his scalp. Locks of hair fell off which he dumped into the can. Ava was stunned for a bit, but thinking about it, what he was doing was sensible. When he lost his hair from his anima destruction, it would be uneven. Dirk just decided to trim it all as he would rather not do so after he had already destroyed his skin. It only took a few minutes before Dirk was completely bald. Since he shaved dry, his skin was also irritated, but that couldn't compare to the pain of a destruction cycle. Plus, it would be healed quickly anyway once he drank a potion. After that, Dirk headed down to the basement room. He walked over to a corner where the case of potions had been placed and popped it open. The case had been moved here since this room was more secure than the rest of the house. Plucking out a potion, Dirk downed it in one go. The potion tasted slightly sweet, making it very easy to drink. When this happened, the AI understood what he was going to do and isolated the potion for future distribution. With that, Dirk sat down and concentrated. Ava sat in front of him with a frown. She didn't say anything about what he was doing. Dirk needed to do this to advance, and if it were her, she wouldn't let some embarrassment get in the way of her progress. However, she also wouldn't have chosen such a sadistic technique in the first place. She couldn't imagine how Dirk had justified such torture to himself. After saturating the right half of his face with anima, Dirk got started and began the resonation. Ow! He let out a sharp exhale as his skin cells were obliterated. On his face, red cracks started to appear and widen while the previously pale surface of his skin was turned red and made raw. His lips, eyelid, cheek, and scalp were all mutilated. In fact, his eyelid was almost entirely destroyed, leaving a few webs of skin. When closed, there would be gaps that revealed his eyeball underneath. It was incredibly uncomfortable, but Dirk didn't make a peep throughout the process. He didn't even scrunch up his face as that would make things worse. He had perfect control over his reactions to pain. After around 10 minutes, the process finally finished. While Dirk had only planned to do exactly one half, he decided to do a bit more and spill over the halfway point a bit to make things easier later on. The result was a horrific face that people would expect to see on a zombie. Even Ava cringed at how terrible it looked. Like all the other times, she couldn't imagine herself going through the same thing with such tenacity. When the cycle was over, the AI commanded a flood of nanites to enter his face. The gaps in his skin were filled and sealed, including the gaps on his eyelid. The result was hints of gray among the red flesh. Especially on his eyelid, one could see patches of some metallic substance. How is it? Like any other destruction cycle. I'll be fine. Although, my eyesight will be hindered some. Dirk responded simply. It really was like any other cycle, only this time it was much more obvious. Also, the eyelid that was destroyed would remain closed while things healed. The eyelid on the other side was also damaged a bit since it was in the vicinity, but it could stay open without much problem. He was glad he wouldn't be blind for a couple weeks, though he would lose a bit of depth perception. After the Nanites finished their sealing work, he left the room and went to apply some medical bandages. The only thing he did was wrap a bandage around his head over the destroyed eyelid, making sure it stayed closed and didn't move. Not long after that, both Dirk and Ava were bidding each other goodnight. Dirk went to bed that night with the destroyed side of his face up. The next day, when Ava came over for morning training, she cringed at Dirk's face once more. Last night she couldn't see the best since it was rather dark, but now she got a full view of that brutal look. The cringe was out of pity though. She didn't like seeing Dirk get hurt or hurt himself. Though, she also questioned what had to happen to him that caused him to be so tough. His tenacity wasn't natural. Morning training went by normally with Dirk acting like nothing was different. After they ate, both went to school, though not before Ava stressed her mind to find a way to cover his face. 
In the end, she couldn't think of anything that didn't involve wrapping up his entire head in bandages, so she watched as he left for classes with that single strip of cloth covering his eye. And sure enough, Dirk turned practically every single head that day. Everyone whose eyesight he entered turned to get a better look at him. And seeing the mutilated half of his face, many gasped in horror. Seeing those wounds, none of them could fathom what would cause it. Oh my God! Dirk, what the hell happened to you? When he entered his first class, his teacher practically shouted in terror. She flew out from behind her desk and approached Dirk, almost becoming engrossed as she gazed upon the brutal artwork on his face. It's nothing, teacher. Nothing? Say that again and I'll rip a mirror off a wall and bring it here so you can see yourself. What caused this? My training. My face will only remain like this for a couple weeks. What kind of demonic training does this? Is someone hurting you? No, teacher. This is insane. You must be in so much pain. I've already drunk a potion. I'm fine. No, this is not fine. Come on, I'll take you to the doctor. Teacher, I don't need a doctor. If you need someone to reassure you, you can talk to my father. He understands the training I do. Your father? Oh. The teacher suddenly went quiet and stopped. How could she not know Riker Strider, a Marquis who held one of the highest positions in the academy? She knew very well this father of Dirk's, and if he was able to vouch for Dirk, then that was that. Despite knowing this though, she was still worried. Those wounds simply look too horrifying. Are you sure? Yes, teacher. I've been doing this training for over a year, and all of my skin has looked like this at some point in time. It's just been hidden under my clothes. It's only now that you've noticed. I. I see. Thank you. I'll take my seat. Sure. The teacher looked on dumbly as Dirk went to his desk. He had been doing this for a year? All of his skin? What kind of torment has he gone through without anybody knowing? It stunned her silent, and she made a mental note to talk to his father when she got the chance. That class went by with the teacher taking glances at Dirk. All the students also constantly looked back to get a look. Dirk had shut his eyes at some point, just letting everyone look as they pleased. His other classes were no different. His instructor had a similar reaction to the first teacher, except when he saw that Dirk was toughing things out, he laughed proudly. He declared to everybody that Dirk should be their role model and emphasized the importance of toughness. Many of the students agreed with him after taking a single look. As for his magic classes, Dirk explained his way through the earth and fire ones. But when it came to the dark element class, that needed to be handled a bit differently. Well strip me nude and tie me to a magic tower. What kind of abomination could you have possibly come across? I've never quite seen anything like the wounds you have painted on your face right there. Garrel, as enthusiastic as he was in all things, instantly ran over and checked out Dirk's face with the concern of a mother for her baby. He kneeled as if he were praying and even went so far as to accept the existence of light mages if they could perform the miracle of healing Dirk, something that shocked the whole class as they knew very well Geralt's deep hate for the light element. Just how much did this teacher care for Dirk? Dirk had to very tactfully explain how he was okay in order to prevent Geralt from carrying him to the hospital personally. Not even the name of his father could get him to back down because according to his words, not all parents are so loving as to go to the ends of the world for their children. Since they let you get hurt like this, I might just have to punish them myself. Hearing this, Dirk panicked and hastily explained some more. He couldn't have this man fight his father, who was a tier 7. He would die. And Dirk knew that Geral really would fight his father. That's how volatile the man was. It took almost ten minutes to finally calm Geralt down and convince him that he was okay. However, after thinking of something, Geralt suddenly took a step and disappeared from everyone's sight. Dirk could detect a body of darkness and his mana sense quickly leave and dash off to who knows where, obviously Geralt. He couldn't even shout for him to stop, and he had a sinking feeling. What would he do? Dirk wanted to find his father at that moment and warn him. 
However, after only a few minutes, he reappeared. There was a bottle in his hands which he gave to Dirk. Here. This is a special potion. It'll help you. And no, it's okay. You don't need to give me something so expensive. Oh, it's not mine. Don't worry and take it. Dirk was stunned silly. Not his? Then whose was it? What went on in the mind of this teacher all the time? Dirk was genuinely stumped now. He couldn't understand the slightest bit about this man. However, as Dirk hesitated, a roar shook the school. Garol! Where the hell is my potion? Oh! Garol frowned a bit. Even the students could feel the rage in that roar. Ah, here, take it real quick before he comes. Just as Dirk was going to reject the potion, Garol grabbed his shirt and pulled him over, shoving the potion into his mouth. He then used some magic to force it down his throat. Dirk's eyes shot up in confusion and rage as he had no choice but to ingest it. He wanted to stab the man right then and there. Pa! Get the hell off me! Once the potion was in his stomach and Garol loosened his grip, Dirk pushed away from him and got into a combat-ready stance. It looked as if he was about to murder Garol where he stood. Fortunately though, the booming steps everyone could hear in the hallway meant he may not have to. Garol! You good for nothing, shit for brains, limp dick psycho. You don't just enter my workshop and take potions as you please. The doors to the classroom were promptly obliterated. Dirk dodged the shards of wood that came flying at him with agile steps and looked over. A short, pudgy man came stomping in. He had wild blonde hair that stood up like fire and long pointed ears. However, he truly was short. He was only around four foot six inches and was almost rounder than he was tall. He looked like a mean ball of fat. The fact that he was elven shocked Dirk even more. Elves were supposed to look tall and slender. What kind of ironic joke did the gods play on this man? Seeing the angry man, Geralt just looked off into space as if it had nothing to do with him. Naturally, this pissed the fat man off to no end. His face reddened in rage. Geralt! You may have taken potions before, and that may have been more permissible, but not this time. Hand over that potion. If you don't, I will not hesitate to kill you. Aya, I'm so sorry Master Shen. I do not have the potion. What? What's going on here? Suddenly, another voice was heard as two people came walking in. One of them was a mean-looking man with a fierce and deadly aura. The other was the valiant Duke Hillshire who immediately caught attention. Ah! Headmaster! Geralt has stolen another one of my potions. Sigh. Geralt, we've talked about this. Taking the property of others without approval is against the rules. If you keep doing so, I may just let Master Xing here have his way with you. Hearing what happened, Duke Hillshire pinched his nose exasperatedly. Obviously, this had happened more than once before. Seeing this, the onlooking students were stunned silly. Geralt proceeded to complain like a child. But Headmaster! My student was hurt and needed immediate attention. I couldn't bear to see him in pain, so I gave him the potion I took from Master Shen. His potions have always been able to heal wounds quickly, after all. You what? You fool! The fat man, Master Shen, cursed as Geralt pointed to Dirk. Hillshire and Master Shen looked over to Dirk, but oddly, Master Shen was trembling a bit. Damn it! You absolute moron! Quick! Get that kid to a medical room! Wait, why? What's going on? The Duke and Geralt both looked at Sheng, surprised and confused. That potion was experimental. It's not a healing potion. It's supposed to enhance the blood source of a tier 6. The energy inside of it will kill him if we don't dash. Cough! As Sheng was talking, Dirk suddenly bent over and coughed up a pool of blood, falling to his hands and knees. Blood began to seep from his eyes and ears, even from some pores on his body. He trembled all over. Hurry! Get him mana suppressants. That potion will destroy his bloodlines. Damn! Sheng! 
Go get something that will help. Fian. Bring him to the medical building. Tell her vet to treat this kid right now. Go. After the Duke gave orders, the man with a deadly aura instantly ran over to Dirk and carefully picked him up before dashing out. Master Shing also dashed out and ran back to grab some potions. Finally, the Duke left to go grab his friend, Dirk's father. After no later than a minute, these people were all gathered in a medical building. A bed had been cleared off and Dirk's body was trembling on top of it. Blood constantly seeped out of him, already soaking the bed he was on. However, after a man dressed in a red coat came down from the top of the building, Dirk's situation stabilized some. The man in the red coat looked mature but constantly fatigued. His eyes were sharp as he searched through Dirk's body and utilized his power. White strings of light seeped from this man's fingers and into Dirk's body, and the raging blood and mana inside of him were forcibly settled. Here! These potions will equalize the, my god. Master Shing came running over at that moment with a whole case of potions, but when he saw Dirk, his heart dropped. It looked like all of his blood was trying to escape his body. His usually pale face became totally white. Where's my son? Get out of my way! Suddenly, another shout echoed through the building as another man came flying over with literally blazing steps. His feet ejected flame as he moved faster than the eye could comprehend. In splits of a second, he was beside Dirk's bed. The Duke also appeared the next moment. What the hell happened? Riker spoke with seething rage, but he didn't allow his power to rampage for fear of hurting Dirk. Despite not being the culprit, Master Shin cowered a bit. No matter what, it was his potion that caused this. The man in the red coat, her vet, glanced over for a second before sighing and turning back to Dirk. His white strings never ceased to operate. The Duke explained the situation to Riker. Meanwhile, Dirk was fighting his own battle. Chapter 28, Recovery Back when the potion was forced down his throat, Dirk immediately realized that it wasn't a normal potion. Usually he could isolate substances with the nanites, and he did indeed command his AI to isolate it, but this liquid diffused into his system uncontrollably, totally bypassing the nanites. After that, he was overwhelmed by the raging power held within that potion. The power of the potion surged through every single one of his veins and arteries. This power was pumped through his heart, putting that under pressure as well. After that, Dirk could feel his bones heat up, a searing pain coming from within them. He felt like everything was bursting at the seams as his blood violently increased in volume. The mana in his blood also started to explode out of control. It was like it gained a life of its own as it pulled in the surrounding mana, dumping as much of it as possible into his bloodstream. All these things threatened to obliterate his entire vascular system. However, he didn't just sit idly by and watch it happen. He had heard Shing say that he needed mana suppressants. Secondly, this potion was supposed to do something to his blood source. That was likely the term for the vascular system, so Dirk gave several orders to his AI to reinforce his vascular system, especially the heart. That moment, all the nanites in his body flowed through his veins with his blood and did their best to prevent the surge from damaging things. But the results were limited. He still ended up vomiting and spilling plenty of blood. However, that was only the start. Dirk could feel the insane amount of mana rage through him. While the potion was destroying his vascular system, he could sense that it was indeed attempting to reforge him somehow. It was trying to reforge his entire vascular system into something different. It even seemed to burn his bones, the potion seeping into his marrow and tempering it. However, he couldn't handle it, and it would kill him before the process was completed. So he needed to take more measures. The biggest measure was getting the mana under control and preventing his blood from running wild. To do this, Dirk immediately forced the mana to concentrate in his heart. As blood surged inside of him, he sought to fill it with mana and diffuse it through his system. He employed the mana lungs technique and mana heart training technique to do this, and it had good effects. Dirk's blood began to absorb copious amounts of mana, and he was able to form something of a cycle, maintaining blood flow. However, for some reason, the potion inside of him continued to eject blood. 
it also continued to try and destroy his heart, veins, and even lungs. Not even his bones were spared. He could only hold on for so long. Over time, Dirk watched as his blood poured out of his body, emptying his vascular system. He felt his entire body and mind become hazy. His blood had been almost entirely expelled. At that moment though, his bones and body began to heat up greatly, and another liquid began to flow inside of him. Dirk felt something throughout him change. Warning! Undergoing genetic change. Employing trait, adaptable genes. Alert! Severe medical state detected. Activating overdrive. With these two notifications, his body underwent changes and was reforged. Overdrive ensured that he would have the energy to stay alive in the absence of healthy systems. As for the trait that was activated, Dirk had no idea. He had never known what the adaptable genes trait was aimed toward or how it could be used. He had thought it was just there and never paid attention to it. Now though, it looked like his very genes were changing. Dirk became exhausted as he forced his fading mind to use two strenuous techniques. His control over the mana inside him slipped after long. His heart was eroded away, and his veins continued to burst. On the outside, he was completely drenched in his own blood, and his skin had turned black and purple. When that unknown liquid flowed through his body though, he was slowly repaired. First, his chest began to feel revitalized, and then his brain became lucid. His limbs were last to feel any semblance of healthy. Even then though, he was in pain all over. Thankfully, he could take it. This process lasted an unknown amount of time, and Dirk realized that he had fallen unconscious at some point. Despite that though, he retained some lucidity to circulate his techniques to help any way he could. He could feel the blood in him control the raging mana, and anything that couldn't be controlled was exhaled with the mana lungs. It was a cycle of controlling, intaking, and ejecting. The power within subsided. After a long time, he finally felt safer. However, perhaps because of his weakness, all the mana quickly drained out of him. He would have felt like an empty husk if he had been awake. Thus, Dirk entered a deep sleep, his body's natural functions taking over to ensure his survival. After Drick fell unconscious and stabilized, the people around him sighed in relief. Hervet, the man who was treating Dirk, sat back on a chair tiredly. Master Shing also relaxed. However, the Duke and Riker were nowhere to be seen. They were having a chat with Geralt. You son of a bitch. Give me a good reason why I shouldn't destroy your soul this instant. I truly deserve to die, Sir Strider. Geralt was kneeled with his head on the floor in front of Riker. Riker had blue flames surging around his hands, increasing the ambient temperature to that of an oven. Luckily, all the students had been dismissed. Contrary to his expectations though, Geralt didn't try to plead innocent or deny his guilt. After seeing what had happened, he genuinely felt horrible and even wanted to take his own life. Hillshire had stopped him, but with him acting like this, it made it difficult to find a way to deal with him. Geralt had Dirk drink the potion out of pure goodwill. While he had forced it, this actually wasn't the first time he'd done this, as evidenced by how skillfully he forced the liquid down Dirk's throat. All the other times though, the potion had really been for healing, and Shen could have his anger subsided with a bit of remuneration. Now though, it came close to ending with the death of Riker's son. This matter was sensitive. Hillshire was the one who was most conflicted. Riker wanted to have Geralt butchered, but he couldn't be killed so easily. He was still a tier 6. He was a valuable asset to both the Empire and the Academy. Unlike what many students believed, Geralt was a genius when it came to teaching the Dark Element. There wasn't anyone better in the Academy, and Riker had actually arranged for Geralt to teach Dirk's class personally. Geralt had also taught Rita, his daughter. To think things would go this way was out of anyone's expectations. But this time, Geralt was just too chaotic for his own good. Hilshire had to think things through carefully. Riker. Speak. Leave him alive. Riker was quiet as his hand itched to tear out Geralt's heart. Hilshire spoke. He's valuable. You know that. 
Even if you didn't want him here anymore, he would still be able to fight some battles for the Empire. More than that though, your son still needs to learn the Dark Element. He's the best one for the job. If my son will even be capable of training Mana anymore. Hervet said he's not sure, so we can't jump to conclusions. We'll need to wait. So regardless of what you feel right now, nothing can happen to him at this moment. I understand. Thank you. But there won't be no punishment. Saying that, Riker flicked his hand. The Duke's eyes went wide, but when he saw Geralt's arm fall off at the elbow, he sighed and just turned around. Riker also turned and walked out, leaving Geralt who was now gritting his teeth in agony. Afterward, some guards came in and took Geralt away to prison. By the way, as they walked out, Hilshire patted Riker's shoulder. Please talk to your wife. I don't need to receive a report tonight of any assassins breaking into the prison. Don't worry, you won't. He, I see. Hilshire chuckled wryly as Riker walked off. That night, muffled screams echoed eerily throughout the prison. Mmm. -hmm. A low groan was heard as Dirk opened his eyes. Seeing the unfamiliar white ceiling, his body tensed up and slipped out of the bed he was in, quickly crouching out of view. He completely disregarded the shooting pains that caused. Status. Currently located inside a medical room. Three days have passed since potion ingestion. Current state, combat capable, 91% healthy. Medical room? So I was treated. Dirk calmed down as he processed things. The next moment though, the AI came back with a notification. Alert. Changes have occurred to bodily systems. Magical statuses have also been affected. Constructing host model. Host model. Age, 12 years. Blood type. Skeletal structure, organic iron composite. Muscle structure, high power compacted fibers. Sensory organs, high sensitivity organic receptors. Self replicating nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems, online, 58% capacity. Final stand weapon system, offline. Overdrive systems, online, 11% capacity. Current bodily state, combat capable, 91% healthy. Alert. Final stand weapon system under construction. 64% complete. Insufficient mineral reserves. Intelligence systems fully functional. Awaiting host orders. Seeing this model, Dirk's eyes were immediately drawn to his blood type. Before, it had been AB+. Now the AI couldn't understand what it was. Everything else seemed normal though. Since overdrive had been activated, it didn't have a full charge. It would take a bit to recharge. It also looked like his nanites were damaged. Seeing how much blood he lost though, that was natural. Lots of the nanites had been in his blood. After checking that, Dirk opened his profile. Profile. Name, Dirk Strider. Species, Human. Tier, I+. Rank, 2+. Attributes, Fire, 71%, Lightning, 89%, Earth, 88%. Metal, 93%. Dark, 92%. Traits, Cybernetic Enhancement, Adaptable Genes, Pure Soul. Skills, AI Interface, Grade 7. Are you kidding me? Dirk shouted exasperatedly. His tear had gone down from tier 2 to tier I+. While it wasn't a lot, he would have to start over on his mana heart. He had put in so much effort for this to happen. It was unfair. Dirk really didn't like losing progress. He had done so much to finally get the heart to start taking form, but when he looked inward, he couldn't see anything. Even his blood seemed to have lesser mana saturation. He eventually accepted it though. It wasn't like he couldn't start over. At the very least, he could sense and control mana still. That meant that this treatment hadn't disabled him. However. Interface. Awaiting orders. What still needs to be healed? What's the damage? Internal vascular system is still healing. Approximately 10% still has yet to be repaired. 
However, since your vascular system has undergone changes, the nanorobotic maintenance and repair systems are currently unable to assist in the repair process. Deep scans are underway to adapt to new parameters. It is advised that you remain unmoving until fully healed. Ah, I see. Dirk nodded, proceeding to get back up and slip into his bed again. He felt comfortable laying down as his heart sent tremors through his bed. So what's different about my vascular system? Dirk asked after he got comfortable. If anything, his body didn't feel weird. He actually felt fantastic. His brain felt refreshed and body vigorous despite his not being totally healthy. Three primary changes have taken place on both the physical and genetic levels. All blood cells have been enhanced. Blood cells, per unit, are now capable of passing on 40% more nutrients and energy than before. Blood vessels have changed to accommodate this, and blood vessel density has increased by 34%. Lungs have been altered to process atmospheric gases quicker and more thoroughly to accommodate blood cell enhancement. The heart has also been reformed and is 15% larger. Its strength has increased by approximately 65% to allow higher maximum beat rates and accommodate increased blood circulation. So in short, my stamina has gone up. Your lifespan may also be increased due to these changes as your vascular system has been strengthened as a whole, decreasing chances of heart or lung disease and defects. Right. So why can't the nanites assist in repairs? Deep scans must be concluded to ensure proper integration and cooperation with all cell types and functions. Genes are currently being analyzed. Estimated completion time, 46 hours. Hmm, interesting. I guess I can take a break for a couple days. Dirk smiled and took a deep breath. He felt like he could run a hundred miles with how much energy he had. And honestly, that might not be far from the truth. He felt his face the next moment. From his touch, he found that his face had mostly healed. He could do another destruction cycle by the time he was totally healed. Until then though, Dirk decided to get started on retraining his man heart. He was pissed about losing progress, but there was nothing he could do now except do it again. Feeling the man around him, he began breathing earth and metal mana in and out. His body was surprisingly accepting of all the mana and he could immediately feel his mana saturation increase. With this, he wouldn't need to take a long time to get back to tier 2. He did breathing cycles for around half an hour, but even then, he felt nothing. No tiredness, nothing. It really was like he was normally breathing. This made him more excited and he simply continued to breathe. However, after around an hour, someone came to his bed unexpectedly. Dirk stopped his breathing suddenly as a nurse laid eyes on his conscious self. Why you're awake? Yes? Dirk tilted his head at the nurse's shock. She stumbled around a bit before going to his side, putting her hand on his forehead and feeling his wrist for a pulse. Steady pulse, no abnormal temperatures. Relax and let me do a checkup. Saying that, a white string of light came out of her finger and streamed into his arm. Dirk could feel this power scan around his body for a bit before coming back out. The nurse nodded, though her surprise didn't lessen. Almost totally healed, except for some light damage. You'll be good in a couple days, it seems. Rest here for a bit. Mr. Hervet will be here soon. Saying that, the nurse left. Dirk only waited for a few minutes before a man walked over. You're a rather tenacious child, aren't you? Tell me, Dirk, how much do you remember? A man in red garments came over and sat down, staring at Dirk with curiosity. Dirk thought about things some before answering his question. I remember being carried by someone to a bed, but my vision wasn't so great so I didn't know where I was taken. I then felt the mana within me calm down over time and I was able to take control of my situation better. Once things were settled though, I passed out. That's about all I remember. Mm, so you really were lucid for all of that. The man, her vet, nodded as he sat back in his seat. He let out a light breath, seemingly exhausted. I must say, even I didn't expect you to actually be able to survive that ordeal. 
Every drop of your original blood was drained from your body and replaced. Your heart was reformed, as were your bloodlines. Any normal kid would have died once he lost most of his blood, or at the very least have gone into shock. But not only did you resist shock, you actually took control of the raging mana inside of you to save your life. If not for your employing that technique of yours, you would have died a blood-soaked mess. While it couldn't have been done without my assistance in dispersing a lot of the mana, you still saved your own life. I applaud you, Dirk. You've truly impressed me. Thank you. Dirk thanked the man, though inwardly he was wondering why this man was praising him so much. The doctor saw Dirk's weird expression and chuckled a bit. I'm only saying these things because I've never dealt with a situation quite like yours before. Both the situation and you are very interesting. You're a strong kid. Anyway, it looks like you've come back stronger than ever. I expected you to be in a coma for a week or two even with our treatments, but it looks like you'll be back up and running in no time. However, I hope you'll let me do some tests. I just want to make sure there isn't anything unobvious hiding in wait to come back and bite you later. Alright. I actually have a few questions though. Ask away. Her vet welcomed Dirk's curiosity. You said my blood was replaced. What kind of blood do I have now? A good question. The doctor smiled as a string of light was produced from his fingertips, entering Dirk's body not unlike how the nurse did earlier. Master Sheng, that fat little elf, was experimenting with a potion that could modify and enhance blood source. Blood source is the marrow within your bones that produces your blood. In order to accommodate the new blood source, all of your blood had to be expelled and replaced. Your veins, lungs, and heart also had to be changed accordingly. Xing had taken several ideas from dragon physiology and was attempting to make something that could replicate their blood and blood source. Not exactly, of course. Just enough to improve on a humanoid's blood source. The result was the experimental potion you drank. The fact that it was experimental was also the reason for it being so violent, though in actuality, Xing had reduced its rampant effects since he himself was going to take it and he doesn't train anima. It was supposed to be resisted by using magic. If it weren't for that, your body would have been thoroughly broken down. Now technically, experimenting with dragons and attempting to make something from their biology is illegal within the empire, but Xing bent the rules enough to get away with things. There are thousands of alchemists who try to experiment with dragons all the time just like him. Anyway, you could say that your blood and blood source are now that of a dragon's, only watered down. According to Sheng, your blood should now be more accepting of mana. It's also more efficient, and you should see your physical abilities improving very soon. Your ability to recover is now also greatly increased. So all in all, you've turned this catastrophe into a boon. While it isn't exactly giving you wings, you're still getting a bit of a boost. I'm interested to see what happens when you begin dungeon diving. When the doctor was done speaking, the strings of light retracted from Dirk's body, and he began writing things down on a piece of paper. Dirk though had more questions. I see. Will anything change for me? In terms of day-to-day -day living? Hmm, I don't think so. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure about every effect that potion has instilled on you. It was still an experimental potion after all. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wait and see. That's why I'm advising you now to come and see me should anything out of the ordinary happen. I've also heard that you're a very active kid. Do be sure to exercise when you're able to understand your new body. Sure. Good. I have everything I need. Your parents should be here any minute now, so I'll take my leave. Thank you. Of course. Bidding goodbye, the doctor left. Not long after, Dirk could see his parents rushing over to him. Chapter 29, Scare Slash Channeling Technique Dirk! Thank the heavens you're okay. Cecilia ran over as soon as she saw him, hugging him tightly. She quickly released the next moment though, forgetting that he still might be hurt. She checked all over his body, stopping at his face and head where wounds from his destruction cycle were still present. How are you doing, sweetie? Does anything hurt still? No, mom, I'm fine. 
the doctor said I'm almost totally healed. Really? That's good. What about your face? Is this from that technique? To think you need to destroy the skin on your face. It's fine. Doing the face is the last of what I need before I advance to rank 3. So you really are close to advancing. You're doing a very good job, Dirk. Cecilia gave him a kiss on the forehead. Since he didn't have hair, she couldn't ruffle it like she usually did. Dirk and his parents talked for a bit, mostly about his recovery and if he needed anything. Eventually though, Riker brought up the topic of Geralt. Dirk, I want you to decide how to handle your teacher. He looked at Dirk with a serious expression, though he wasn't being serious toward Dirk. He merely felt anger whenever he thought about Geralt. This situation, believe it or not, isn't a new one. Geralt is a young teacher who's been at the academy for around a decade. Even before he became a teacher, he was always known for how chaotic he is. His stealing potions from Master Xing is actually a common occurrence, one that's never been of much consequence. But he's made an irreversible mistake now. Only. He paused for a second, thinking. I'm not at the liberty to decide his fate, at least not completely. Hillshire wants your opinion on whether or not you wish to see him at the academy anymore. If you don't, I can have him ejected at once where he'll go on to fight for the Empire. On the other hand, Geralt is a very good teacher. Hillshire pointed out that you should get the best education available to you. If you should wish, Geralt would go back to teaching you as normal. But if you don't, you will receive a new teacher as soon as you go back. Hearing this, Dirk went silent in contemplation. On one hand, Dirk didn't appreciate how volatile Geralt was. Hearing how this wasn't the first time he's done something like this was actually expected. Geralt was basically insane. The man had no code he lived by, and seemingly no boundaries. He simply did as he felt. Dirk wasn't fond of people like that. On the other hand though, Dirk had to admit how skilled Geralt was. In the short time that he had learned under him, Dirk was able to learn a lot. This was despite being taught without any books or curriculum in general. From Geralt, Dirk was able to understand that the dark element was fundamentally different from other elements. He came to know more about its nature. Geralt's eccentricity actually helped with that. Geralt was someone who lived by the ways of the dark element. One could see the element through him. Plus, Geralt didn't mean any harm. Dirk was his favorite student, and Geralt felt strongly about him. Dirk couldn't blame the man for this mistake, even though he was conflicted about how he felt about Geralt himself. In the end, Dirk came to a decision. He didn't want to have a harder time learning about the dark element and he didn't exactly hold a grudge or anything. While he wouldn't allow Geralt to do anything against his will like that again, that was about the extent of his animosity. I don't mind continuing to learn under Geralt. Really? Riker was surprised by his response. Dirk just shrugged. He means no harm, and I'm sure he's learned not to do that again, so I think it's fine. He has also helped me a lot with understanding the dark element. He's worth more as my teacher than as a corpse. That's, right. Both Riker and Cecilia looked at Dirk, surprised by his ruthless and uncharacteristic words. Dirk also froze up a bit, realizing his mistake. Unfortunately, the ship has left the harbor. He just stayed quiet and hoped they didn't think anything of it. Anyway, I'll let Hilshire know then. Let me go talk to her vet and see if Dirk can come home with us. Riker left as he spoke. Not long after, Dirk was allowed to leave, and they went over to his house in the academy. Since it was later in the evening, Cecilia prepared dinner. Rita also arrived at that time, and the family ate dinner together. After dinner though when the family left and Dirk was preparing for bed, a pair of eyes looked down on the house from a hidden place. The eyes were almost emotionless, but within there was a bit of curiosity. It was only around for a little while though before it disappeared without a trace. Two days later, Dirk was walking into class as normal. It had been five days now since he'd been to school. Even then, he had decided to do another destruction cycle, and his face was yet again destroyed, earning him all kinds of stares. But he ignored it and stuck to himself. 
This time, his teacher didn't question him about anything and acted like nothing was wrong. However, Dirk started hearing some weird whispers this time around. He tuned into all the conversations around him. That's that kid, right? Wasn't he supposed to be dead? I heard he exploded in a pool of blood. His teacher tried to kill him. How is he alive though? I know one of the guys in his class and he said that there was no way he could have survived. And what's up with his face? One of my friends had nightmares about his face the last time he was here. All kinds of gossip was going around and it was as if everyone had learned about who Dirk was. Even some of the older kids were talking about him. People were saying that he had risen from the dead. And Dirk didn't really blame them. He really should have died from all that. How he survived, he didn't know. Everything had just gone right. It was only natural that people assumed he was dead. After first class ended, he moved on to his second. Since it had been two days since his three-day coma, Dirk was refreshed and prepared for all physical activity. However, that became the least of his concerns once he walked into the gym. Ava, who was already there, laid eyes on him and froze up. Seeing her, Dirk frowned as he remembered the one thing he forgot about. He prepared himself for what was to come, but surprisingly, Ava didn't lose control of herself. She simply went silent for the entire class, only nodding to him when he told her he was prepared to resume training in the evening. From there, Dirk went on to go through his earth and fire classes. While he had missed five days of material, it wasn't hard to catch back up. By the end of class, he understood what they were doing. Then came the dark class. For that, Dirk was a little nervous, wondering if things would be different. But when he entered, he was almost relieved to hear that same enthusiastic voice. Dirk! See, I knew he wouldn't die so easily. Everyone, let's hear a round of applause for this tenacious soldier. Welcome home. With Gerald's enthusiastic welcome, the ten students that were present awkwardly clapped for Dirk. He just stood at the front with a neutral face, forcing down all embarrassment as if he were a robot. However, when he looked at Geral, he was surprised. He lost his arm? Dirk looked at the shoulder stump on Geral's right side. Dirk thought for a moment before nodding. It must have been his father who did that. Little did he know, his father had only taken off half an arm. It was his mother who took the other half. After that awkward entrance, the class proceeded as normal with Geral not even acknowledging the missing arm. Geral went on to diligently teach and spill all the knowledge he knew on dark mana and its nature. In fact, there was one little tidbit that stuck with Dirk that day. The more you understand an element, and by extension, the more runes you can form for it, the easier it is to control. While this doesn't mean much in the lower tiers, upon approaching the higher tiers, it's absolutely crucial. One cannot go far without understanding all they can about their element. In this way, hard work can sometimes beat sheer talent. Dirk memorized this line. This told him perfectly why he needed to learn these runes. It was more than just being able to form spells. It was being able to comprehend the nature of the element. With that, Dirk went home for the day. Upon arriving though, he saw Ava waiting outside. The two didn't say anything as they headed inside. Today we should do some high-intensity work. My body has undergone a bit of a change and I need to see just how much is different. What's wrong? Seeing how she didn't respond, Dirk asked. He knew something was off with Ava, but didn't know how off. She was quiet for a bit before sitting on the couch and speaking with a slight tremble. How true were the rumors? Hmm. Dirk thought for a second as he sat down next to her. He had heard plenty as he was walking down halls and listening in classes. Most of what he heard involved how he should be dead. The other comments were about how hideous his face was. People were even starting to give him names. According to the doctor, the fact that I'm alive is a miracle. The potion I drank basically drained my body of all blood and life. Luckily though I was able to hold out long enough for it to rejuvenate me with its effects. If I hadn't been helped so quickly, I'd be a really cold corpse right no dash. Can you not say that? Ava cut him off with teary eyes, and he went quiet. 
he did notice that he was getting a bit comfortable with his wording. To the emotional Ava, some things may be insensitive. It was an odd thing though, having to accommodate someone's feelings. Dirk just did his best to listen as she spoke. I just, sorry. I was scared. Everyone just started talking about how you died one day, and then you didn't come home. I wasn't sure if it was real or not, but then someone said that one of the teachers was sent to prison for killing a student. And then another person said that there was a medical bed soaked entirely in blood. And, everyone just kept saying you were dead. I, I didn't know what to do. Ava started bawling her eyes out. Meanwhile, Dirk was trying to figure out what to do. He didn't realize that he had such an impact on her. But he also wasn't dense. Since she was crying, he did the only thing he could think of. He moved over and hugged her. Ava leaned into him, staining his shirt with tears. While he didn't apologize, this told her enough. Much of the time, Dirk was a man of action, not words. Like Cecilia, Ava came to understand intuitively how Dirk operated. Because of that, this hug said a lot. It took a minute for Ava to calm down and stop her tears. However, she didn't pull away, instead sinking in a bit deeper. As another minute ticked by, Dirk became increasingly confused and a bit awkward. When was this supposed to end, exactly? Wasn't she fine now? None of this awkwardness translated into action though. In many situations, his mind and body were completely in sync. But in others, like now, they were totally detached. He simply sat there with her in his arms, his mind awkward but body mostly relaxed as if this were normal. Finally, Ava was the first one to break. Dirk could feel her heart rate increase, and her breathing became conscious. She stiffened up as she became aware of every little movement of hers. But she still didn't seem to want to separate. Instead, using her awkward behavior as a cue, Dirk let go. Anyway, I'm fine now, and we need to train. Or are you not up for that? And no. I'm fine. Just, don't scare me like that again. Please? I won't try to. Can't you just say that you won't? Getting hurt in the future is guaranteed, especially if I dungeon dive. I can't promise to never get injured. That's not the point. Enough, let's work out. We can ensure higher chances of surviving perilous situations with training. That's the only real reassurance there is. Dirk spoke as he pulled Ava up by the arm. She just sighed and went outside with him. While he was right, it was nice hearing a bit of reassurance too. The two started training, but Dirk was quick to notice how Ava had regressed in stamina. He attributed this to two things. For one, she likely didn't train for the five days he was gone. Two, he knew that being stressed was bad for physical health. He knew now that his disappearance affected her a good deal. But that didn't stop him from pushing her to her limits. By the end of the workout, she was heaving for breath on the floor. Dirk though was quite the opposite. Even when she was exhausted, he was still doing more and more. It was like his stamina was endless. Why? Huff, how are you still going? Ava looked at him with incredulous eyes. Even when he was in top shape he couldn't go so long so easily. But now, it was like he didn't just almost die a few days ago. I told you that my body changed. Although, I'm starting to see a problem. A problem? I can't get tired. How is that a problem? Ava shouted in injustice. Here she was panting like a dog while Dirk was complaining about not being able to. For Dirk though, it was indeed a problem. It wasn't like he couldn't get tired, only that it would take a long time. Dirk wouldn't be able to improve if he couldn't reach his limits. However, after thinking for a bit, he remembered something. Interface. Awaiting orders. What were the results from the genetic scans? Dirk remembered that the AI had done deep scans after his recent change. He was interested in its results. Genetic scans indicate a mass alteration in gene sequencing for bone marrow in the vascular system. These genetic changes have resulted in enhanced overall stamina and enhanced blood delivery systems. 
the most drastic changes have occurred in the lungs and bone marrow. Your bone marrow is now capable of producing a much greater volume of blood in a short amount of time, and it has greatly enhanced your natural regenerative ability and immune system. Additionally, your entire vascular system has responded well to the infusion of mana, proving to be much less resistant to it than previously. However, your blood has yet to be identified. It has a new type of structure and operation pattern, so it cannot be classified under any previously known category. For now, it remains unclassified. I see. Dirk nodded hearing the diagnosis. It seemed his genes really had undergone a change. This made him think about his adaptable genes trait. This trait had likely allowed his body to smoothly transform under the beckoning of the potion. If it weren't for that, Dirk's body would have likely rejected the potion, and he would have died under its oppressive power. This combined with Dirk's skill usage, Hervit's intervention, and Master Xing's reduction of the potion's physical effects helped to ensure his life. After verifying some more things with his AI, Dirk turned his attention elsewhere. He needed to solve the problem of his workouts becoming less effective. Luckily, he already had an idea of how to do this. Pull up the technique from the Anima Resonance Destruction Technique. Searching. Dirk's AI sorted through his scans of the manual. A few seconds later, Dirk was looking through a page in the book. When he had first read through it, he had no idea what this stuff meant. But now, he could understand and utilize it. As Rita said, his anima manual did indeed have a technique within it. Dirk had planned to start using it, but he didn't expect to have a little sit down with death, so things changed. Now though, he could bring his attention to it. Technically, the first technique within the manual was the whole body resonation. The second technique though was aimed toward physical enhancement. Anima Channeling Technique Utilizing the anima in your body, you can boost and enhance your physical prowess. Not unlike with mana, anima will be expended in the process of enhancement. However, it can be regenerated over time. All sections of the body that have been enhanced will be capable of easily intaking and refilling their reserves of anima. However, any parts of the body that haven't been enhanced will take longer, and they can also be damaged in the process of channeling anima. A way to avoid this damage is to condition your body so that your physical energy can be expended in exchange for protecting your body. This energy expenditure doesn't apply to parts of the body that have been enhanced. Dirk read through the technique. After reading on the details of how to channel anima, he found that it was rather straightforward. It consisted of activating the anima in the part of the body one wanted to strengthen, and if you expended all that anima, you could channel anima from the rest of your body to supplement. It really was similar to magic in that one expended mana for various effects. After reading over the technique and grasping the details, he moved on to trying it out. Dirk activated the anima in his right arm. Immediately, he could feel strength flood his muscles. It felt surreal. Also, since he didn't resonate it with anything, it didn't do any damage to his body. Dirk got a bit excited as he felt that superhuman power. The next moment, he looked down to the ground and swung his fist with all his might. Boom! A low rumble shook the floor, startling Ava. Her eyes darted to his fist that was wrist deep in the ground. What the? What was that? An anima technique. Dirk spoke with even more excitement. When he punched, he could feel how much power was behind his fist. However, he could also feel an energy drain. That single move cost the same amount of energy as a whole half hour of workouts. But Dirk was fine with that. He could do several hours worth of workouts. However, he learned something else after throwing that fist. I can't strengthen only one part of my body. If I throw a punch like that carelessly, I'll dislocate or tear something. Hmm, I wonder how I would hold up against a tree. Suddenly thinking of something, he looked around and spotted a tree by his house. Dirk ran over and activated all the anima throughout his body. Every fiber of his being was filled with extreme strength, and he swung his leg at the tree trunk with the force of his entire body behind it. Boom! Crack! Upon impact, the entire tree shook, and it bent sideways. 
Dirk's shin was like an axe as it cut through half of the trunk that was a foot thick. The tree promptly fell over. Oh my god. Dirk looked back when he heard Ava's voice. She was looking at him as if he were a monster. He just smiled. I figured out how to use anima. I see that. But we haven't learned any anima techniques. It's from my manual. Check if yours has one when you get the chance. Maybe you can use it. It would be good for training. He spoke as beads of sweat formed on his forehead. That single kick took out a lot of energy. He already felt hungry as the fuel in his body was sapped away. He wasn't bummed though. He was excited now that he found a quick way to drain his body of energy. It would make workouts much more effective. Chapter 30 Arrogance After Dirk learned the technique within his anima manual, he went on to train day by day with it. He was indeed correct that this training technique was incredibly efficient. Within only 10 minutes, he would be on the floor sapped of all his strength. This was even after he received the stamina enhancement. He was baffled by it all, but it quickly replaced the way he trained. The only time he refrained from training this way was when he was training combat with Ava. With that, time passed quickly. In only a few weeks, Dirk was able to complete the destruction cycles on his face, though not before he was called plenty of names. Dirk never really spoke or interacted with anyone, and now that he had a face of nightmares, nobody wanted to interact with him. It made him something like a black sheep that nobody went out of their way to be friends with. Naturally though, Dirk wasn't bothered. He barely even noticed the difference since he was never social to begin with. Right when he finished the cycles on his face, his rank went up to three. Now, he had lots of anima at his disposal. He also learned to control his anima channeling technique better, lowering the anima expenditure so that high strengths could be maintained for long periods of time. He immediately determined that this ability was his best weapon. Also, with finishing his skin destruction came moving on to the next section. From rank 3 to 4, he would be destroying his blood. The principle was exactly the same as with the skin. He would destroy blood by resonating anima, and some of the blood would be enhanced in the process. After recovering, he would rinse and repeat. However, there were a few things he would have to do differently. First, he couldn't destroy too much. The book noted that destroying too much blood could be dangerous and even permanently debilitating. He wouldn't actually only be destroying blood, but also his veins. The two would be enhanced together. So Dirk had to take things a step at a time. Second, this wasn't like the skin where he could do a few patches at a time. His blood came in one big supply. After destroying some, he would have to wait for complete recovery. Each cycle would take longer because of this, and lots of energy would be used up in the process of regenerating his blood. Third, destroying the blood was actually incredibly painful. Dirk didn't think it would be painful at all, but after trying it once, he learned that it was worse than destroying skin. The first time he tried it, Dirk concentrated the anima around his forearms, thighs, and neck. These places held major veins and arteries with lots of blood flow, and this was actually pointed out in the book. From there, he resonated the anima according to the book. The anima strictly targeted the blood with its unique frequency, and soon, blood was destroyed. However, that's when the pain hit him like a truck. It felt like lava and needles were pumping through his veins. The blood vessels all through his legs, arms, and head screamed in pain, and Dirk couldn't hold back his own shout of pain. He grunted and trembled as blood disappeared from his body and his blood vessels were cracked just like his skin. Streaks of red matching his veins appeared all over his body. It was only when he lost about 15% of his total blood that he stopped. When he did, he felt a splitting headache and burning all over his body. The pain didn't even stop when he did, and it was a long while before he finally recovered enough to move around. A feeling of low energy and weakness hit him not long after, and he forced tons of food into his stomach to kickstart recovery. According to his AI after that, it would take a few weeks to regenerate all blood. And Dirk didn't know how much blood was enhanced. The book only told him to continue doing cycles until it no longer hurt. With that, 
Dirk could only push through without a sense of progress. Luckily, training Anima was only half his focus. Right as he finished off his skin destruction cycles, Dirk was also able to advance in tier. It only took a few weeks to get his tier back up to tier 2. From there, he restarted the formation of his mana heart. However, this time, the process was a bit different. Whenever he would train his mana heart, lots of the mana would be sucked into his bloodstream. This slowed the process of forming the heart, but it was very good at saturating his body with more mana. Nevertheless, he was able to notice how much his vascular system had changed. Even his mana breathing was easier because of the genetic enhancement he was subjected to. His body simply had less resistance to mana and would absorb it willingly. With that, Dirk trained every day. Two more months pass, and the middle of the year comes around. Every year, the school hosted two tournaments where the students would fight each other to test their strengths and form rankings. For a long time, the students in the first year class were excited to fight and form a hierarchy. However, their excitement was dashed when they received a piece of news. First year students didn't get to compete. Because they were new and knew nothing about real combat, first year students weren't recklessly thrown out to battle each other. This could result in deaths if a student couldn't control their power or another didn't know how to defend themselves. They were simply too inexperienced, so they were only allowed to watch their seniors fight in the Colosseum. However, they weren't totally depressed. When the halfway mark rolled around, all their teachers finally brought them out for some practical training. Magic teachers had their students perform live spells all the time, and anima instructors had their students start to learn combat and ways to use their anima. They finally received combat training, and all the students were thrilled to be able to show off their ability. However, when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat training in the anima classes, two dark horses quickly made themselves known. They were Dirk and Ava. Since Dirk had trained Ava for a long time in the ways of martial arts, she was naturally very proficient. And when she was put up against these other students who knew nothing, she destroyed them. One day, when the teacher had decided to have his trainees spar with a partner, Dirk and Ava had automatically gone to each other. After all, they spar and train like this almost daily. However, the instructor had separated them. Boys could only fight boys, and same with the girls. In his words, he didn't want anyone getting handsy. This was a very sensible concern, and Dirk nor Ava had any reason to disagree. Thus, they were arranged partners. Dirk faced off against another similarly sized kid, though this kid was quite a bit skinnier than Dirk. By now, Dirk had ripped and sizable muscles that could be seen clearly just from his visible biceps. To many of the students, he was actually rather intimidating with his cold and dominating air, one that couldn't be brought down by anything. It was like nothing and no one could ever beat him. Though, it also wasn't arrogant in the slightest. He simply exuded strength and confidence, and others couldn't help but shrink away. Of course, Dirk didn't feel like going all out against the kid. Because of that, he took up the position of a teacher and went on with the spar. He corrected mistakes and taught the kid how to properly carry out techniques. Of course, his teaching involved live demonstrations, and the kid was the test dummy. The kid was soon covered in bruises, looking quite miserable. Though, his eyes were fiery. He wasn't at all disappointed or embarrassed. However, on Ava's side, the situation was very different. Ava didn't know that she wasn't supposed to really fight against these kids. She was still a kid herself. Plus, with Dirk's philosophy of being strong in everything he did, she went on to be serious and perform her best. She squared off with her partner, and when the spar started, the partner couldn't even react before she was being thrown around. Bang! Ack! A slam was heard, and everyone stopped to turn to the shout of pain. They all saw Ava who had done a shoulder throw on her partner. The girl on the floor had the wind knocked out of her, and she looked as if she were dying. Of course, Dirk had seen the whole thing. He decided he would keep an eye on Ava to see how she did. Seeing the shoulder throw, he sighed a bit inwardly. As for the instructor, he had a much louder reaction. Ava! What's going on? W what? 
What did you do to her? The instructor ran over and checked on the girl who was catching her breath. The girl was basically crying as a few tears streamed down her cheeks. All the boys felt pity and wanted nothing more than to comfort her. Facing the angry instructor, Ava was a bit stunned. She had realized she went too hard when she threw the girl, but why was the instructor angry? She simply sparred with her. And it wasn't like she would die. There was nothing to be angry over. Getting hurt was normal in a fight. I. I just sparred. Yes, but we're not trying to hurt people. They're your classmates. How are we supposed to spar if nobody can get hurt? That defeats the purpose of fighting. Hearing the instructor's ridiculous response, Ava retorted, a slight hint of anger in her voice. She was now questioning whether that man truly served in the military or not. She was also starting to realize how weak her other classmates were. A huge deal was being made over a simple shoulder throw. Dirk's training would hurt many times more, and that stuff went on for hours. Hearing Ava, the instructor seemed to realize the stupidity behind his statement. He went quiet and contemplated for a bit before sighing. You're right, but you seem to be experienced in combat, whereas your classmates are not. Knowing that, you shouldn't be throwing them around like dolls. When they get better and learn to put up a fight, then you can start throwing them around. However, until then, I guess you won't be able to spar with them. Sir. Hmm. At that moment, Dirk walked over. He went up to the instructor and quietly spoke to him. After a few seconds, the instructor's eyes lit up. I see. Very well. Ava, go ahead and spar with Dirk from now on. You two are always together anyways, and I guess both of you are experienced, so go ahead. Okay. Ava nodded with a smile, and the two went off to their own area, leaving their partners behind. As they walked, Dirk spoke to her. Next time, activate your core more. You want to keep your center of gravity stable when performing the throw or you'll throw yourself off balance. Pfft. Ava almost burst out laughing. She expected a scolding or something like a talking to, but Dirk instead corrected her form. She smiled brightly. Despite practicing twice a day with Dirk, she somehow felt that training together in this class was more fun. The class soon resumed after that with everyone going back to clumsily sparring with each other. However, they were quickly distracted once more when Ava and Dirk did their own session. Bang! Slam! Thud! The two threw, kicked, grappled, and punched each other it was like they were really fighting, and the entire class couldn't help but turn their eyes towards them. Their spar was violent, but somehow very fluid and artistic in a way. Both people were incredibly experienced with each other, so they naturally had their way of going back and forth. One moment, Dirk would throw a kick at Ava's thigh and go in for a tackle, but the next, Ava would counter with a knee and take down. They would move from their feet to their knees and then to the floor, dozens of different moves, combos, and techniques being used throughout each series of fighting. Even the instructor didn't know what to say. Dirk and Ava were definitely hurting each other. Just the sounds of slamming bodies and slapping impacts made everyone cringe, but neither person seemed to acknowledge the pain. It made the girl who cried over a single shoulder throw look like a joke, and the girl herself was slack-jawed over what she was seeing. The class eventually concluded with Ava and Dirk practically putting on a show for everyone. Not even the instructor stopped what was happening. He realized that they had done this before as soon as they started, so he had no reason to step in. Plus, letting the students watch the display was good experience. It would make them more eager to fight themselves. While spars didn't happen every day, they did happen around once a week. And every week, the students would watch Ava and Dirk duke it out. Eventually though, the students started fighting themselves, and they were toughened by the fights that became increasingly violent. They didn't want to cry in pain when two people just like them were going through much worse without a peep. Fast forward another five months, and Dirk came up on the end of the year. By now, Dirk had done many cycles of destruction on his blood, but it still didn't hurt much less than the first cycle. Only his ability to tolerate the pain got better. 
and after so many months of training up his mana heart, there was a rather solid core of mana on top of his heart. The heart formation was coming along nicely. Ava also made lots of progress. In fact, she was able to hit tier 3 before Dirk did. While her anima remained at rank 2, it was still impressive growth. When the end of the year came around though, the entire academy became active. This was because the second tournament of the year was going to start, and this time, first-year students were allowed to compete. Dirk's entire class was excited and doing everything they could to prepare. Everyone trained twice as hard, and the spell ranges were always filled up with people trying to increase their proficiency. Dirk, however, wasn't one of these people. He simply went about his days as normal. This was because he had no intention of competing in the tournament. What? Why not? You would do really good. Hearing how Dirk was going to abstain from the tournament, Ava was stunned. The point of the tournament was to test your skills and get ranked above your peers. What kid at their age didn't want to be number one? It was insane that a person as skilled as Dirk didn't want to put those skills to use. There's no reason to compete. I just don't want to. Dirk made up an excuse. The reason he didn't want to compete was because of the experience from his previous life. Not only would it be unfair for all the other kids, but the tournament was filled with just that. Kids. Dirk had a lifetime's worth of brutality and bloodshed, and this little tournament seemed like nothing but a cute pastime. Not only that, but after coming to this world and spending so much time being idle, he didn't have the mood for combat. Sure he still practiced martial arts but he didn't actually feel like truly fighting anybody. That lifetime's worth of battle seemed enough for him, and he would rather spend his time training himself, something he saw as productive. But of course, he couldn't tell Ava that, so he had to make something up. Why wouldn't you want to? There's no better place to fight. What, do you think you're too good? Yes. Well, that might be true, but that's no reason not to enter. The tournament is more than just fighting your own class. You get to fight the seniors too. Ava spoke excitedly. She was much more enthusiastic about this tournament than Dirk was. All the people she knew from her dorm and her classes were constantly talking about it. It was a big deal for all of them. Dirk just sighed. There was probably no way he could convince her that he shouldn't compete. There was actually no reason for him not to. It looked like he would just have to disappoint her. What's this I hear about not competing? At this moment though, the door to Dirk's house opened, and a person walked through. Both he and Ava recognized the voice. It was Rita. Rita's appearance now slightly surprised Dirk, and not because she appeared from nowhere. She was a bit taller, her face and body mature, and her demeanor confident. She almost seemed like a grown woman, and it was only her face that still maintained a bit of teenage youth. Her long black hair fell down on the back of the gray robe she wore, and her eyes held a certain dark violence within. It seemed she had her fair share of battles. Dirk didn't mind any of this though as he turned to her. Hi Rita. So why don't you want to compete? After Dirk greeted her, she wasted no time and interrogated him. He responded to her with a blank face while she stood opposite to him with her arms crossed. I don't want to. That's not a reason to refrain from fighting. You know, I'm surprised. I didn't think you of all people would be scared to enter. I'm not scared. Then fight. There's no reason for me to. There's no reason for you not to. Enter the tournament, Dirk. It'll be good for your growth. Rita spoke to him seriously, and Dirk had no choice but to go quiet. Why was his sister so adamant about him competing? This tournament was just a little game the kids were eager to play. It would do nothing for him. I'll talk to Dad. Okay, now I'm curious. What's up with you and not wanting to compete so badly? Now it was Rita's turn to be questioning. She didn't think Dirk would be so resistant. He usually just went with things, but now he was actively fighting her on this. That didn't happen very often, if ever. It won't do anything for me. Nobody is experienced enough to fight me well. Me doing well would mean nothing, so I would rather just refrain. 
Dirk responded with a hint of the truth. He couldn't elaborate, but it would hopefully be enough. Unfortunately, Rita was surprised by his answer. The next moment, she sneered. Well that's a lot of arrogance I didn't expect out of you. Dirk, you might be a bit of a genius, but there are others out there. You haven't seen them since you seem to abhor social interaction, but they are there. There are those that have received training from an early age, and those that simply advance absurdly fast. There are also those who can simply comprehend everything about their element in no time at all, giving them a wide range of spells to use. This academy is full of very capable people, so don't get all high and mighty. Arrogance is a very dangerous thing, and it could mean the end of your life if you aren't careful. Rita took on a scary aura as she approached and got in Dirk's face. Dirk simply stood there at attention and let her. However, her words seemed to strike a chord in him. He delved into thought before nodding. I understand. Do you? Then enter the tournament and earn your right to be confident in your skills. Until you put yourself to the test, you aren't allowed to assume anything about your ability. Do you concur? Yes. Good. Then I'll get going. In fact, I'll talk to Dad for you. You'll have your spot in the tournament within the week. If you back out, I'll personally hunt you down and beat you into the floor. With that threat, Rita left the house, slamming the door behind her. Dirk sighed. Well now I don't have a choice. But she's right. There's no room for arrogance. I'm also a kid, so if I can't fight those at my level, then I still have a lot to work on. I have yet to earn my confidence here. With that, Dirk took a seat. He and Ava were about to make dinner. As for Rita's surprisingly hostile interaction, Dirk didn't think much of it. She was growing and becoming more mature. By now, she had done many dungeon dives, and she was very capable of killing. Her words came from experience. Only, Dirk had yet to experience what it truly meant to fight in this world. On Earth, everyone was rather equal, and there wasn't a significant separation between the damage people could do with weapons. Skill didn't necessarily secure your life. But in this world, there was an extreme amount of power variation between individuals. Dirk would now have to prove himself. He knew that there was a lot to learn about power in this world. Meanwhile, Ava simply stood to the side the whole time. She was both nervous and excited. Nervous for Dirk, but excited that he would be fighting. Not even she could pull out his full ability, and she could tell that he had a lot hidden. She was eager to see if someone could push him to his best. 